to the line. There's a one-time shot by McCann. It's tied. Bunting, Bolchinski, Bunting, scores. Moore comes in. He scores. Brian Moore scores for Sioux St. Marie. And the Greyhounds have forced a game six. The task is simple. Win three straight games against the Prodigy. The Sioux showed signs of life after staving off elimination in game five. But now they enter his house. McDavid between the legs, he scores! Connor McDavid, are you kidding me? What a brilliant play by Connor McDavid! It's hockey's only show as the CHL takes center stage on Saturday night. Next. Erie, Pennsylvania, home of the Otters. Another night, another shot, another chance for McDavid and company to take the next step to an OHL championship. But something tells me the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds will have something to say about that before the night is through. Inside the dressing rooms, Connor McDavid, a quiet game five, only one assist, but five points in his last two games, an 18-game point streak, and 37 points in 14 games for Connor McDavid. I think he's just fine. Meanwhile, Dylan Strom, OHL's leading scorer in regular season, a surefire top pick in the NHL draft. 18 points in 14 games for that young man. Darnell Nurse, Oilers first rounder, who's pulled off the McDavid card. Stud blue liner plays both the shutdown role for the Hounds and generates offense as well. Welcome inside the CHL on Sportsnet Studios. I'm Jeff Merrick, joined by Todd Warner and John Shannon. This is a Game 6, but in a lot of ways, guys, this will have a Game 7 feel to it. There's no way the Erie Otters want to head back to the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds home country, hound country, they call it, tied up at threes. And front and center, it's been front and center since Game 1, guys. The matchup of Darnell Nurse facing off against Connor McDavid. They will be future teammates, but they're still enemies until then. The bottom line for Sheldon Keith is that there's only one matchup he's concerned about. Just one. Not with all the other great scorers on the Erie Otters. It's this one. Darnell Nurse versus Connor McDavid. They will go head to head. It's one that I don't think Chris Knobloch minds either. If you're talking about power versus power, Nurse versus McDavid, and who will win and who will prevail, that's the real challenge. And I think we saw signs last game of some fatigue in Connor McDavid, some irritated parts of his game. He was slashing guys and getting off his game a little bit. So maybe Darnell Nurse and his checking is starting to take an effect on Connor McDavid. Just one assist in the last game, maybe it's starting to have an effect. You know, we've said so much that, you know, Connor McDavid takes his game to the next level, no better player in the entire CHL. But when you look at what happened last game and players were all Ganley all over him, Nurse was all, does he need help from his teammates? Does he need Remielli, Alex to bring it? Where's the help from McDavid here? Well, I, I think that's a really fair comment when you consider he hasn't scored in two games and he's in a situation where he can't be the only go-to guy. Nick Baptiste has done his part at times. The four goals in game four were certainly an aspect of that. Alex DeBrickett's four goal, or two goals that night were pretty positive too. Ironically enough, Sheldon Keefe says that that might have been their second best game of the series. Mm -hmm. They just have to stay out of the penalty box. Still need to see more from Remy Ellie, and I want to see more from Dylan Strom. He's been hot and cold in this series off and on. I want to see him contribute too. If we get all those guys going, good signs for Erie. You know, big news for the Erie Otters. Uh, the return off suspension, the eight-gamer for the headshot on Max Domi in the uh, series against the London Knights. Curtis McDermott, the large blue liner back for the Otters. And they're thrilled to talk to Jay McKee, the defensive coach of the Erie Otters. They're thrilled to have this guy back. 6'4", 230 pounds. He's coming off an eight-game suspension. Maybe a little bit rusty. For this hit on Max Domi of the London Knights in the last series, this guy's a big presence, a physical guy, a leader in the locker room. And look for the matchup tonight between him at 6'4", and 230, and Nick Ritchie at 6'3", and 220 from the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, the leading scorer on the Greyhounds. Chance for some fireworks within, between these two tonight. Again, that's a matchup that the, the, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds don't mind. They're, they're, they're quite confident. They believe that any situation, they have power versus power, man versus man. The one player you mentioned, Tyler Ganley, Jeff, has really proved to be a key guy for Sault Ste. Marie in this situation. McDermott serves on, on defense for Erie. Ganley has given Nurse 
that green card to go anywhere on the ice. Become a rover at times. Mm -hmm. And Ganley's play hasn't played well all season. 38 games. He hit, missed so many games because of injury. Ganley's playing his best hockey of the year right now. The Carolina pick is. Quickly, before I get to the ring, mentioned off the top, this is going to have a Game 7 feel for the Erie Otters. They do not want to go back to the Sioux. No, no, they don't. I mean, I don't blame them either. I actually think there's more pressure on Erie right now Absolutely. than there is on Sioux St. Marie. And remember, this could be Connor McDavid's last game in Erie hmm. if everything comes out the way Sioux St. Marie fans want it. Yeah, I think the pressure is squarely on Erie's shoulders. They need to pitch their best game of the season tonight. They do not want to travel another 1,000 kilometers by bus back to Sault Ste. Marie and try to settle a game in Game 7. They need their best that's game That's an interesting tonight. one. One team's doing the bus, the other right. team's flying. Yeah. I mean, you have a to team. think that that's going to take a toll sure. at some point. Sure. Eventually it catches up. Let's catch up with uh, Rob Falls, who's standing by with the returning Curtis McDermott, the big man with Fallsy. That's right, Jeff. Look up. Look way up. There's Curtis McDermott. You get a chance to come back. First question is, they're going to say, what about game rust? Uh, uh, just go through a quick couple first shifts and get the flow of the game and uh, be good from there. You know, the great thing is, if there's any upside, is it's not an injury that kept you out. It was the fact you were suspended. So there's no time for you to try to recover. You're ready to go. Yeah, you know, I've been working hard You know, during practice. Cardio came my cardio up, and uh, I think it pays off. What do you expect from tonight's game at the opening minutes? It's going to be a fast game, man. It's going to be awesome. Curtis, thanks very much. Thank you. Curtis McDermott is a big man, and with him returning to the lineup, it moves Patrick Murphy up onto the wing. We're ready to go. They've asked the fans here to make some noise. They will. So, too, will these guys who are going to call it R.J. Broadhead and Louis DeBrusque. Prefer if it's not called noise, Rob, but we will talk a lot about the goalies, including Brandon Halverson. It's been tough for him. His team has outshot Erie in four of the five games, but he's had to come up big when he has faced shots. He has an 880 save percentage in this series. He's a New York Rangers second round pick, and he had a fabulous effort in game five. Devin Williams, the 19 year old from Saginaw, he's the reason why Erie's been in the games, including game five, they were heavily outshot, but Williams had another superb effort. He has a 900 save percentage in this series, and that's something Chris Knobloch has talked about all season long, to stay around that 900 save percentage mark, and you're going to have victories. Erie has been rocking. It's been waiting for game six. Fans have been tailgating since about 12.30 this afternoon. Ten minutes before the warm-up, fans were going up and down the aisles, cheering, go Otters, go. And now it's underway. The two powerhouse teams, two top teams in the Western Conference, going head-to-head -head and for a second straight game. The Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds, the number one ranked team in the Canadian Hockey League base elimination. They answered that call in game five. Can they do it on the road in Erie? Here's their top line, Sergei Tolchinsky, the Russian import. He's properly at the Carolina Hurricanes. Leaves it in the corner for Jared McCann. He's a first round pick of the Canucks. Nick Betts couldn't get it outside the line. Michael Bunting, he's drafted by Arizona. Puck comes just outside the Erie blue line. Going back to get it, Troy Donne. With Curtis McDermott back in the lineup, that will take some pressure off the 4D that Erie's been running with for the most of this playoffs. No question about it. Chris Knobloch saying he might play 30 minutes tonight. He's going to put him out there, see exactly how he can play. And he's a big body that can eat up a lot of minutes and play that physical game. And that's what they need in this series. Erie having trouble getting out of their own end. Darnell Nurse, the captain of Sioux St. Marie. We'll see him a lot. He's number 25. Justin Bailey controlling down low. His pass. Picked off by McDavid, can't get it out. Bailey has it for the Greyhounds. Makes a pass over to Spears. His shot is stopped by Williams, and here he sends it down the ice. That won't be icing, and what a foot race this is. Nurse and McDavid. Darnell Nurse trying to skate away from McDavid, but he's so dangerous at picking the pocket. Nurse was aware of it, tried to dump it in and chase it, but he didn't get to center. Get the skating going right away, and a real good start by the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds getting pucks in deep in that possession game. They did so well in game five Thursday night for Sheldon Keith. He feels they could be a little bit better, a little more disciplined. I thought they played an excellent game, but he expects them to come out and be that much sharper, especially in the home building of Erie, where he knows the fans are going to be behind them. Get the feeling he's a perfectionist. Yeah. Always room for improvement. A little bit more each time. Face off win for Dave Gertler. He had a huge empty net goal in game five to put that game 
away for the Greyhounds. Here he had the goalie pulled. Greyhounds were shorthanded, so it was a six on four, and they were on their heels. Gertler left it all on the line to go down and get that empty net goal. He's teamed up with Nick Ritchie and Brian Moore, who had the game winner in game five. Ritchie tried to shovel it in front. There's Curtis McDermott. Moves it ahead to Patrick Murphy, who's playing forward tonight. He's been on defense, a versatile player for Chris Knobloch. Taylor Raddick gets it up to center. Jake Marchman, he's by himself. His shots wide of the goal. He'll get right on the heels of Gertler to try to make things difficult. Anthony D'Angelo. We know he's battling an injury. He's not feeling 100%, but played pretty close to it in game five. Yeah, he sure wouldn't know it the way he was skating around and getting into the play. McDavid creates a turnover. He's behind the net. His pass comes all the way back to the line. The shot from Genovese, and that's caught by Halverson. Just a quick little rush. It's so dangerous when he picks up a puck in the offensive zone. That's how he's so effective. He explodes into the puck, finding that open ice, and he's looking for options in front of the net. He's able to wrap this around. And for McDavid, you know, you're, he's going to look for these opportunities to take a puck to the net a little bit more. We talked about maybe passing off a little too much last game. I don't expect him to do that in this one here. He's going to be looking to finish a little bit more. And that's his patented move there. He loves to wrap that puck around on the forehand side. Time flies. John talked about it in the studio. We've talked about it, Louie. It could potentially be yeah. the last game in Erie for Connor McDavid. And then maybe not either. A good start. Nick Ben scores. Otters lead. Offensive zone time. Building on shifts. A good chance leads to another one. A face-off in the offensive zone. And this one here is the type of goal you like to see early in a game. Get a puck to the net with bodies in front and make it happen. Good face-off win, good possession, move the puck around, find your lane, get it there, and a perfect job getting to the net and a perfect redirection for a 1-0 lead early. And the fans in here are getting pretty excited already. And that's what you want to build on. Get the excitement up. And by that reaction right there, you can tell they are. Travis Dermott with a good pass. Don't talk about him a lot with all the yeah. great draft eligible players on the Otters, but he'll likely be a second round pick in the upcoming draft. He's really up his game. It's incredible. He logs a lot of minutes, 45 points in the regular season. Plays a two way defensive game and a nice little offensive touch right there. Always has a smile on his face, just loves to play. Before game six, all kinds of pressure. He's smiling. Just another game. Anthony D'Angelo tried to answer. He took a shot. That was stopped by Williams. Tim Gettinger missed eight straight games. He was a scratch, but he played now in two straight. And why change your lineup if you're winning? That was Sheldon Keefe's decision. D'Angelo, crafty, got it over to Colton White. He moves it into the high slot, but Zach Sinitian couldn't handle that pass. White chases after it. He'll keep the puck in. Gary again having problems breaking up. Similar to Thursday, RJ, real good reaction after getting scored on first by the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. They get a puck in deep, cycle it down, establish good forechecking, physical contact, get themselves right back in the game, and put the Erie Otters on their heels. Nick Betts, the goal scorer, his third of the playoffs. Takes a hit. Connor Boland. Fox lose down there. Kolchinski right in front of his own goal. It was a dangerous pass. It caught Bunting in the skates. He took care of it, though. Can at the Erie blue line. He can't get it in deep. Here's Dylan Strom, number 19 for Erie. He led the whole Ontario Hockey League in scoring with 129 points this season. He has seven points in this series. Quietly has been able to put up some strong numbers. And if he ever gets his multi-point game going, the Erie Otters will be flying. Darren Radish. He retrieves the puck in his own zone, made a nifty little move to knock Justin Bailey off stride, but Bailey's relentless. All the way to center, he was on the back of Darren Radish. That dump in was close enough for Halverson to redirect out of play. Bailey had a real strong game Thursday night, was really effective. Chris Knobloch, speaking of Bailey, he drew a couple penalties, and that's one thing that Chris Knobloch talked about, being disciplined, not taking those penalties. We'd like to see things go their way a little bit, if they can control the puck and play with it more often. And having big Curtis McDermott back in there is going to allow him to shuffle some decks, get some more bodies on the ice, and give guys a little bit more rest. He expects them to be the more energetic team in this game. Connor McDavid. He's on the ice. His line mates, Alex Dabrinkit, Remy Alley. Face-off win for the Otters. Ryan Moore. 
Working all over to break it. Kept the puck in, though. Remy Alley trying to spin away from Darnell Nurse. Nurse checking somebody other than Conor McDavid and got the job done. Travis Dermott. Oh, there was a move at the line, and that put Ellie offside. Good gap once again. A little extracurricular afterwards, a little jostling and verbiage going back and forth. But that's what Sault Ste. Marie was so effective at, and that backtracking by the forwards, the constant pressure makes you want to make that one last move at the blue line. You saw it there creating the offside. Sault Ste. Marie's been excellent at that and building that wall on their defensive blue line. And with the final change at home, Chris Knobloch pulls the McDavid line off and moves with... Would probably be considered his third. He kind line. of joked and said, almost impossible to get away from Darnell Nurse when he has two minutes and 30 long shifts. So just go with the play. They'll try, but don't pay too much attention to it. Not sure if that's accurate. I think it's more like he takes two shifts off a period. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's out there all the time. All the time. And he can jump into the play. He just doesn't seem to ever get tired. Amazing athlete. Saw so his dad, Richard Nurse, the former CFLer. He's been following. To St. Marie around. Proud of his son, and here's Darnell Nurse. He called himself a rover when I was talking to him after game five. Defends well and jumps into the play. Here he is on this rush. Nurse waiting for the trailer. He was looking for McCann. Passes behind him. And now that leaves Ganley, the lone man back for Sioux St. Marie. Made a good pass ahead to McCann. McCann circles the net. Made a pass, and it's in. Bunting following up. Williams lost track of it, and it's tied at one. Well, once again, it's the big line for Sault Ste. Marie. We talked about them last game, having to get into this series and be effective. And did they ever in game five, and they've carried over into game six. Just a good little drive wide by McCann. And, you know, one of those simple plays, keep the puck on your stick, take a look, a perfect little pass, and it gets a little lucky, you carry him off the net. But right to Bunting and Bunting, finding his scoring touch. He scored a big goal. And this one here ties the game early, so this line comes together once again and gets their team right back in. Third straight game with a goal for Michael Bunting. He led the Greyhounds in goal scoring with 37 during the regular season. He's back. Not like that hit from Remy Elliott, knocked Darnell Nurse down. Connor McDavid's line is out there now. And of course, Darnell Nurse is still out there. That might be the first time he's been knocked down in the series as well. He's a solid customer. Roy Donne. Property of the Rangers over to Remy Ellie. 12 games now without a goal for Ellie. Very uncharacteristic. Had 30 goals in the regular season. He's out there with McDavid, so you know he's going to get some chances tonight. Long shot from the line. That was blocked. John Dupuy sprints the other way. It's a three on two. Puck dropped off for D'Angelo. Tried to return it to Dupuy, but he couldn't get it to the net. Alex Debrinkin up ahead to McDavid. He's by himself. Cuts to the middle. McDavid on the backhand. Oh, he got around Bull and he got a chance. Couldn't put it on Bull. Got it to the line. Genovese shot. That hit bodies in front. Goes harmlessly to the corner. Baptiste just got a stick or an elbow up high. He reacted. The referees didn't. Gettinger at center. He found Hayden Verbeek, but Darren Radish stood him up. You'll notice the Erie Otters are wearing their gold uniforms. They won games three and four wearing their blue. They normally wear these sweaters on Saturdays, but they are also their good luck sweaters. Not undefeated in them, but they seem to play well when they wear them. We'll see if that comes to fruition here in game six. Whatever it takes, right? That's right. If you believe, yeah. maybe it does work. Dylan Strome got some time and might have taken too much of it. Got a shot away. It was redirected. Easy save for Halverson. Still trying to dig it loose down low. Pops out. And Sinisha. He can get those feet up and down. And he gets hit by Curtis McDermott. And he's going to get a penalty. Nick Ritchie and Curtis McDermott, they were eyeing each other in warm-ups. They're having a conversation now, but they won't be able to talk for two minutes or less because McDermott's going to the box. Power play when we come back. Erie leads. Tied at one, rather. Well, as you come back here, RJ, Curtis McDermott in the box for two minutes for I'm not too sure exactly what the penalty is because he tries to put the big hit down on... 
Sinitian, who's a speedy customer. Sinitian jumps to the middle to get out of the way, avoids the hit, barely any contact whatsoever. Doesn't even really catch him with the leg. And he's going to head to the box, maybe guilty by association, being a big six foot five, 222 pound customer. They're looking for him. And Dylan Strom did not like that call and had a little bit of a verbal message for the referee afterwards. And there's been some talk around here that maybe it hasn't been going. The, the Otters way as far as the penalties are concerned and I have to agree with him on that one there Chris Knobloch is showing maybe as much emotion as we've ever seen from him penalties over the last now into four games Erie's had seven power plays Sault Ste. Marie is on their 13th so 13 to 7 yeah, you know for Chris Knobloch he, we talked to him before the game about penalties and, and this is know, going listen, to be another one you here. have to be politically correct and this you have to Another one too. This is getting worse by the second. So I'm not sure if this is a technical one here, or if this is one that happened off the faceoff. Touched, moved it with his glove. Moved it with his glove. So there you go. So it goes from bad to worse in a hurry here. Five on three and a lengthy one at that for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. But again, that composure factor is something that Chris Knobloch prides himself in. But you can only take so much when you think that you're maybe not getting the calls you should. Well, it says two minutes for both penalties, but that would be impossible if. Marchman took a penalty when the puck was dropped. Yeah, <laughs> I guess they're saying that the, the clock didn't start, so how could it be a penalty? But it definitely was dropped. The clock must not have been started up. And maybe it is one second behind if you look at the way it's ticking down the clock. Five on three. Big moment in this game, and it's early. A shot from Nick Ritchie. He's got a good shot. Didn't hit the net that time, though. He can't shoot. It really flies off the stick. You saw that. The other night, he hasn't dialed it in to be that accurate with it, but when he gets it away, goalie usually doesn't see it. Richie has to the corner. That bounced off the stick of D'Angelo. He'll get it back, though. Moves the puck behind the net. Sergei Tolchinsky. Richie, now it's McCann. That shot, he scores! And it's still a power play for Sault Ste. Marie. Wow, that was a laser shot by McCann. Perfectly placed up over top of the blocker of Williams. Just a, a real nice read on his part. Delays just for that millisecond, loads it up and unleashes a great puck movement once again. They're looking for that high quality chance. He walks in and he knows he can get it by that defender in the screen. No chance for Williams in that situation. Up over top of the defender going down to block it. Look at that. You can't see anything. He was moving the wrong way, even. He had no idea where that puck was. And a perfect shot by McCann. He was red hot right now. Jared McCann's now scored in three straight games. Still well over a minute of power play time for Sault Ste. Marie. Gary opened the scoring exactly like they did in game five. Sault Ste. Marie came back to take the lead again tonight. Anthony D'Angelo. He got to the line. Moore follows up. Pass from Bunting, finds Moore, he tries to leave it there. Travis Dermott keeps it along the boards. Remy Ellie banging away, comes to the line. Nick Ritchie can't get it past Ellie. It winds up in the Erie bench. Well, you know, we talked about Jared McCann Thursday and how he had to get more involved in the series. And for the Sioux St. Marie Gray Greyhounds, it's imperative that he's going. And you can just see the confidence brewing. Look at him waiting for that puck. He decided he was going to shoot it. And when he decides he's going to do something, that's the result you see there with a perfectly placed shot. McCann back out there for the Greyhounds. Polchinski to his right, Richie to his left. At the blue line, it's Darnell Nurse. D'Angelo has comes in front of the net in the blue paint, but Greyhounds couldn't get it to the net. McCann looks for the middle of the ice. That long reach of McDermott knocked it away, but not outside the line. Nurse takes a shot. That whistles off the glass. Gets past D'Angelo. McCann keeps the puck in. Cross ice pass. That one's off the glass, too, from Richie. This time it'll get out. Baptiste chips it past McCann, but not enough gas in the tank to chase after. Darnell Nurse. Fans in Erie aren't fans of his. <laughs> He's played Connor McDavid so well in this series. Marchman's on his feet, he's on the ice, and this might be an odd man rush. Marchman takes a shot and scores! Out of the penalty box, he's tied it! Wow! 
Wow, what a laser again. Jake Marshman out of the box, jumps into play. And just a good read to give it to him, and he shoots it through the defender, much like the McCann goal. Heads up, he's looking, he's chomping at the bit, let me out of here, it's going to be an outnumbered rush. And this is a perfectly placed shot once again, puts it through the defender, Nurse goes down to block it, it gets through him, beats the goaltender. Halverson, and this game's tied 2-2. What a chain turn of events here. Good penalty killing by Erie to keep themselves in this one on a five on three, and they tie the game up. Marchman's first goal in seven games. He came out like a house on fire at 11 points in his first seven playoff games, but then the well went dry. He only had one assist over his last six. Yeah. This is a big goal. Playoff hockey. Different players score big goals. They like to see guys step up. Jake Marshman, known for his defensive abilities, taking the faceoffs in crucial situations, a physical guy. Huge goal for him. Erie has it in the Sault Ste. Marie zone. Dylan Strome in on the four check. John Dupuy skates away from Strome, but then Debrink gets in his face. Now in front of his net. Strome reaches for it, steals. Debrink, and he was alone. Pass was out of his reach. Arnell Nurse. Doing that rover roll again, leading the rush for the Greyhounds. He's down low. Hope the puck loses. This comes right in front of the Erie goal. They're calmly going to get it. The Brinkett moved it behind the net. Genovese, the Dane. The Brinkett gets it. He's been out there a while. Trying to get past Tolchinski. Erie just couldn't get it in deep. Tolchinski's the one-man gang right now. Here come the reinforcements. White pokes at it, but it's outside the zone. McDavid with that great speed. Nurse is back. McDavid to the middle. Oh, he got a chance. That was stopped by Halverson. Chipped it past Nurse. Got the shot away. Jared McCann looking for Tolchinski. Bunting by himself, one on two. Dermott knocked it away from him. Then knocked it away from White, who was up there. McDavid tried to stay on side. Couldn't reach that pass from Ellie. Remy Ellie isn't scoring right now. But he's in on the four check, and he can play a heavy game. I like seeing the feet move there by Allen. As you mentioned, he struggled to kind of find that offensive touch, especially scoring. But he's a big body, plays physical like that. That's what you like to see, get involved in the game. Pace is picked up here in game six. Tied at two, the crowd in Erie, loving everything. Remy Allen might get a chance to snap his scoring drop. He didn't go. He was knocked down by Tim Gettinger. Connor Bolin, overage defenseman, calls Whitby home, acquired for his strong defensive play, and he's one of those guys. You don't notice him because he's so strong defensively back there. Ryan Moore, boy, did he have the sights working in game five, put a couple off the post before he fired the game winner in. There's a long shot, hit body in front, that was Dupuy, went wide of the net. Geary out to center, out of the reach of Taylor Ranch. D'Angelo, he's quickly on it. Spotted Bailey, had his pocket picked by the defenseman, turned forward, it's Patrick Murphy. Tried to go inside on Ganley, but he separated him from the puck. That was a great defensive play by Ganley. It's a gamble, but a real physical one. He takes the body, forces the play, and it turns out well for him. Blake Spears, he's in his draft year. The responsible player for Sheldon Keith. Circles in the offensive zone. Gets it back to Medrick Mercier. The Puy. There's Troy Donne staying close. Still in Strom's down there helping out. And here he comes up with a puck. Travis Dermott. He has to head behind his net. As Sioux St. Marie goes off at a change. Pass comes to center. Nick Betts. No loft it in. But Strom had to wait at the blue line. He has no speed to chase after this puck. The Brinkett got in there quickly. Colton White passes to his defense partner, Medrick Mercier. Nick Ritchie, the playoff leading scorer for the Greyhounds. There's a good pass up to Sinitian. How's that for a play from Curtis McDermott? Picked his pocket, took it away. He's been out for the last eight games due to suspension. No rust on that defensive move. Good luck getting it through a guy that big as well. Made that shot off of that. Crowd well, reacts is... Uh, Low floater came in on Halverson. He didn't catch it cleanly. Nick Ritchie has McDavid pinned up against the boards. McDavid, he's been inspired so far in this first period. That was expected. Polchinski, nice move. Can't get it to the net. Remy Ellie's back. And Ellie circles the Dallas pick. Gets it up ahead to McDavid. Ellie's catching up. He's heading to the net. 
McDavid trying to cut to the middle. It was knocked away from him by Darnell Nurse, who now is thinking offense. He's in with the rest of the Greyhounds forwards. McCann snaps a shot. That's blocked by Corey Genovese, helping his goalie up. Danley, the Carolina property. Sends it down. McCann leaves it for Tolchinski. He had to toil through a couple of checks to make this pass to Ganley. McCann, no look between the legs. Speed doesn't connect with Bunting. Bunting in the corner. McDavid's been out there a while. He's fired. Here he gets the puck. Skirmish in the corner between Dermott and Bunting. They're still back there, all tangled up. The referee's right there. And he's going to take both of them. Nobody wanted to give up. We've played 15-21 of game six. It's tied at two, and it's feisty. On the Erie bench with Chris Knobloch. Chris, you said to us you didn't want your team to be passive. That has certainly not been the case. They've been all out. Yeah, I think both teams have been uh, all out. Uh, defensively, offensively, uh, a lot of goals so far, but you can tell that there's a lot of, a lot of energy. What kind of difference does McDermott make on the back end for you? Well, quite a bit. He's uh, the steady, the stay-at-home guy. But gives us a lot of physical presence, but also a guy that can break the buck out and takes a lot of pressure off our back end. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Still looking to find a breakout performer. We've seen four goals so far. This one could be wild, guys. Good to this point, and we're going to have lots of open ice, and these two teams have some firepower. Reason for the open ice is Travis Dermott and Michael Bunting took penalties just before we went to break. It's Dylan Strom and Alex Debrinket up front for Erie. Nick Ritchie and Gabe Gertler for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Dylan Strom waits, takes a shot. It was directed on goal off of Darnell Nurse and turned out to be a tricky save for Halverson. Strom behind the net. He's got some space, hasn't had much of it in this series. And he's creative. He's got time to think. He's looking. He's waiting. Debrinket's trying to get open. Don A's tapping the boards. He was open at the line and got the pass. There's a redirect by Debrinket, but went to the corner. Gertler, he can't get far. Has to backtrack with that puck. Another chance to clear. Darnell Nurse, he moves it ahead. Nitchie, Nick Ritchie's up there. Pass back to Spears. That's stopped by Williams. Long range shot. And RJ McConnor McDavid getting some work done to his right scheme. Why he didn't start the four and four. You typically expect him to be on the ice with all that open ice, but he's getting some repairs done to the blade and hoping to get back in time. Chris Knobloch started four on four with two 100 point guys. Now he's got two 30 goal guys in Baptiste and Alex. McDermott takes a shot. And there's another redirect that turns out to be an easy save this time for Brandon Halverson. Four on four continues in game six when we come back. Round two of the NHL playoffs continue. The Tampa Lightning against Montreal. Tampa winning the first game in double overtime. You'll see it at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time on Hockey Night in Canada. CBC and Rogers Game Center Live. What a series that's shaping up to be. This Western Conference final here in the Ontario Hockey League is not disappointed either. Number one ranked team. All the CHL, Sault Ste. Marie, their backs are against the wall. They were down in this series, three games to one. They won game five against Connor McDavid and his Erie Otters. Here we are in game six. Four on four, Connor McDavid's on the ice. So is Darnell Nurse, and McDavid this time throws a check on Nurse. They remain tied up behind that Sault Ste. Marie net. Greyhounds have the puck. Kolchinski gets it up ahead to D'Angelo. He'll calm things down, let that wave of players go past him. Moves it to his defense partner, Darnell Nurse. Nurse had a couple of cracks at that pass. I defeated in front. That was Darren Radish over there blocking the passes. Then runs into his defense partner, Curtis McDermott. No problem because Greyhounds were off on a change. McDermott's pass that finds Dylan Strom. All he could do, though, was move it inside the Greyhounds end. Dermott and Bunting are back on the ice. We're back to five on five. Strom got a stick up high, reacted. He's back in the play. The crowd is starting to get disruptive. A little restless. 
and a hostile bunch in here to begin with, but things have started to happen. Strome's been pretty vocal in this game, and I like seeing this from Dylan Strome. You know, he's a player that's highly skilled, but when he's emotionally involved, things get going. So a little stick comes through. Not sure if it caught him from that angle. I couldn't tell, but certainly he was fired up. Didn't like it too much. Offensive players with the puck reach him with the stick. You can see why he was a little disappointed, and the fans backed him up. Patrick Murphy. That's the center. Dumps it in. This will be right on goal. Halverson has no problem catching that one and has to freeze it for the Otters closing in on him. You know, impressive through this first period so far. Both goaltenders with all the action that's been going on in front of them, the extra stuff, the fans that are in this. Both of them have been very composed and have dialed things in. Two offensive-minded teams here that have been coming at both goaltenders very strongly, and they've made some real fine saves early on and showed their team that, hey, I'm in for this one. Top series for goalies. There's a shot from the line from McDermott. There was traffic in front again. Halverson at the top of his crease to make the save. You know, Curtis McDermott, he's that big, hulking defenseman. He loves to play that physical brand. His dad, Paul, was exactly the same way. He was a physical player in the National Hockey League, and he's picked that right up. But he does have a soft set of hands. You saw it there. He gets a puck through to the net and has made a couple of nice little defensive plays as well. 40 points this year. Jake Marchman. He's drafted by Los Angeles. He has the tying goal. Came out of the penalty box and sniped it upstairs. Erie sustaining some more offensive pressure in game six than they have in the previous games. First Knobloch caught all the penalties they had to kill off. Six in total. They killed off five of the six Thursday night in Sault Ste. Marie, but it did hurt the top players as far as the energy that they had late in the game, and he felt that resulted in less offense of his own time with the puck. So he expects more of that in this game here. Connor McDavid down below his own goal line. Trying to defend as Jean Dupuis controls the puck for the Greyhounds. McDavid giving him a couple of cross checks in the back, but can't get the puck away from him. He finds Polchinski with a pass. Spears moves it down low. Dupuis all over on this shift. Goes to the line this time. Boland's shot. That gets through to Williams. He kicks it to the corner. McDermott wins that puck battle, but it comes to the line. Kept in momentarily by McCann. The break gets open on the left wing side. McDavid's behind him. Pass gets past McDavid. Into the corner. Remy Ellie. Sends it ahead, but right with McDavid was Jared McCann. Brunton pressured by Darren Radish. He jumped down from his point position. Now Radish chases after Nurse. Greyhounds keeping possession. They're able to get to center this time. Kolchinski knocked it down. Puck bouncing around just inside the Erie line. Greyhounds working to keep it in, and they do. McCann's pass to Bunting. Can't shoot. McDavid took it away. Remy Alley. Long shift for him. He'll get a change as the Greyhounds try to exploit that change by the Greyhounds, uh, by the Otters, and they can't do it. Good stick there by Dermot on the fly by oh, Darnell Nurse, who had some time. Just a little poke there, puts it outside the zone, allows Erie to regroup. Fast paced first period. On the ice and on the clock. Winding down. Nick Ritchie moves it to a safe position in his own zone and goes straight off the ice. Erie, Sault Ste. Marie, tied at two after the first period. Nobody's flinched yet in game six, Jeff. Okay, let's all exhale and yeah. catch our breath. One exciting 20 minutes of hockey that was. We're deadlocked in twos after 20 minutes of play. Let's calm down, settle into the first intermission, and begin John Shannon and Todd Warner here in the studio by talking about Travis McDermott. He returns after the eight-game suspension. You would imagine he would have been throwing coconuts off the walls, waiting to get back into a game. What did you Apparently make of his first? Apparently he was, and, and three-on-three -three games in the last couple weeks, they got a little heated. This guy was itching to get back in the lineup, folks, and I thought he made an impact right away. Yeah, he took a penalty, but this is what he does. He's a big physical guy. He gets involved and showing his teammates he's back in the lineup and ready to make a physical statement on this game. And that's a tripping penalty of all things. He doesn't get too many of those, but he makes an impact. This is a big guy, and you heard Louis DeBrus say he's not just a big physical guy. He's a big guy with soft hands. He can make plays. He gets the puck out of his Yeah, and good pedigree with his dad having played the National Hockey League. And here, here's Nick Ritchie. He wants to hit him, but he doesn't really want to hit him. <laughs> and that's how big, that's how big Curtis McDermott is. Good impact in that first period. And Nick Ritchie's a big boy as well. Yes, now, yes. for every Bobby Orr, there was a Dallas Smith. Oh, and very for, good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very if you're going to go Oshawa Generals, we'll go Peter Nevin did Bobby Orr, but I might be dating myself there. Uh, and for every Darnell Nurse, there's a Tyler Ganley. 
Yeah, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, how important Ganley was to nurse's ability, as RJ called it, to rove all over the ice. To me, this is one of the key things, and in talking to Sheldon Keith today, he, he admitted, too, that Ganley has really impressed him. Here's Nurse in the offensive zone, losing the puck on a drop pass, and there's Ganley way back in his own zone, starting the play. He's two zones apart from the where, where his defensive partner is. Next thing you know, the puck is in the net. Ganley gets another point. This is a guy that can play the defensive side of the game. This is a pretty good hit there on the Otter forward. Heard him. You know, on Patrick Murphy, Murphy and, yeah. and that to me is the asset that yeah. Ganley is, both yeah. from the safety point of view and the defensive side. Sheldon Keith said he was thrilled with the way yeah. Ganley's played in these playoffs, and that to me is a very good illustration of that. That's a great read right there by Ganley, because Patrick Murphy normally plays as a defenseman. He sees him in a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and says, you know what, I'm going right at him. Well, it's a smart it, it, play by smart, Ganley. Smart play by Ganley, knowing who he's up yep. against in that situation. I just think he's been, you know... When, when you allow Nurse to do everything he yep. can do, you need that need safety like valve. That. You know, last year at the draft, the uh, Vancouver Canucks uh, loaded up with two hot snipers. Jake Vertan in Calgary is now eliminated from the Western Hockey League playoffs, but also picked up Jared McCann. Hot stick, one goal, one assist in that period time. Yeah, uh, catching fire at the right time, and he was quiet in the middle part of this series, and I like Jared McCann's approach to this game, getting into the position in the slot, getting his shot towards the net. He's feeling it offensively. You can see it in his game. Early in this series, fighting it a bit, hanging on to the puck a little longer than normally, and missing the net on a lot of shots. This guy's about volume and putting pucks towards the net, and he's starting to gain confidence. You saw that in the first period. Well, and, and when you talk about Vancouver, when you do the equation of what Ryan Kessler got yep. from Anaheim, Jared McCann three years from now is going to be a bigger part, in my opinion, of that equation than even Nick Bonino is and Lucas mm -hmm. Spiza. So that, that to me is... Jim Benning is extolling the virtues of that one thing, yeah. the fact that McCann shoots the putt so well. I think what the gentlemen are saying, if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan, the future looks bright uh, when it comes to forwards that can find the back of the net. Now, With an edge. Uh, With an edge, too. And Vertanen as well. Absolutely. Came off a three-game suspension, lost last night against Brandon, but nonetheless. Um, while many of us may have enjoyed a lovely summer May 2nd <laughs> afternoon, you know what Todd Warner was doing? He yeah. was putting together travel graphs and travel charts for the Mary Otters at the Sault Ste. Marie <laughs> Grounds. What have you come up with, Todd? Well, just fatigue at some point has got to weigh on the Otters. And I, I think I saw it early in that period. I thought they got their legs on it. But look at this. Eight, and a half, eight hours, 48 minutes by bus. This is how Erie's getting to the Sioux, game in and game out. And the Sioux, they're flying hour and 45 minutes. So if this goes to seven games tonight. The Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds are going to be home at 12.30 and sleeping in their own bed. So another reason why Erie wants to end this tonight. They uh, want to tuck I like this you one. Did a nice job on the graph, hey, too, thank by you. the way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what did you do this afternoon, John? He was busy. I, I walked the dogs. I'm rolled sorry, up right. his sleeves and got together and charted out the, uh, the travel for the Erie Otters and the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. We are tied at twos. Two Greyhounds and the Erie Otters. Game six. More of the first intermission in moments. CHL on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Jack Links. Feed your wild side. Tomorrow, do some ironing of your couch with your <laughs> bum. It starts early. Tottenham, the Hotspurs, facing off against Man City, 1230 Eastern on Sportsnet. We have the Jays and the Indians, and then it is hockey a go go starting at 6 with the Bolts and the Habs lightning up ahead 1 0 in that series. Wild and Blackhawks, their second game. And then 9 30 Eastern, 7 Mountain. It is the Flames facing off against the Anaheim Ducks as Calgary looks for a better showing than game one. Play the first period brought to you by Stag Chili, Saves for Success program, where saves made will result in contributions up to $30,000 to minor hockey teams. Stagchili.ca for details. John. Quality case of In and Out in this one. Mm. Quality mm. ingredients in every can of stag chili. Oh a quality <laughs> shot by Jake Marchman coming out of the penalty box. Uh, the master does 10, his work. 12 of the first period. That's the stag chili play of the period. And that is the nephew, we should point out, of a former NHLer, Brian Marchman. Hey, Uncle Mush. He couldn't shoot like that. I got like a that. goal. He couldn't shoot like that. I got that. a goal. Tied at two. His first intermission continues. On the one Stanley Cup playoff game, in case you missed it, game two, Caps and Rangers. Washington up ahead, 1-0 in the series. Third frame, two on Rangers. Derek Broussard, fresh out of the box, takes his pass from Marty San Luis and Ooh. finds 
Ovechkin. the back of the net. Yeah, a little selly. Three to one Rangers. Midframe, okay. Alexander Ovechkin splits the D. He would beat Henrik Lundqvist while falling oh. to the ice. Eh, not exactly the Arizona goal, but still nice nonetheless. Second you goal in as many beauty. games. Caps down three, two late the third. Caps looking for the equalizer. Nicholas Backstrom in front. The Troy Brower denied by Lundqvist. And the Rangers win this one. Three, two is your final score. The Rangers score. always like to make it interesting. Calgary and Brandon, one goal games, John. Game five, Calgary Brandon, last night, second period, title once. Ryan Pilon, wrist at home, first of the playoffs. He's a future first rounder and about a month and a half. 2 1 Week King, just uh, 10 seconds later, Nolan Patrick will pick up the loose puck. His shot beats Max Shields. Three goals in 1 16 for the Wheaties. That's it for Shields, replaced by Brendan Burke. The Brandon Wheat Kings advance with a commanding, wow, 8 to 2 victory. They move on. They will face the winner of Kelowna and Portland. Kelowna leads that series 3-2. Tyson Bailey, the overtime hero last night. Kelowna Portland, game six on Sunday. Game six on Sunday as well. Oshawa and North Bay, that series, Oshawa's favor, 3-2. Mitch Vanden Sample, not sure, took a knee-on-knee -knee hit in game five. We'll find out what's up uh, tomorrow with him. Ramuski, Quebec, that President's Cup final gets underway on Tuesday. Meanwhile, lots of reasons to celebrate in the first. What will the second bring? RJ, Louis, and Faldzi have the answer. First period flew by. Four goals combined, tied at two. Second period just around the corner here in game six of the Western Conference Final in the OHL. Down by the Greyhounds bench, here's Rob Falls. Michael Bunting with one of those four goals, one for the Sioux Greyhounds. Your line certainly got a lot of energy. They're really starting to feel it now, aren't they? Oh, for sure. Our, uh, my line, we, we, we've been buzzing in the offensive zone. And, you know, we just got to keep pressure and getting pucks to the net, and I think we'll be fine. You know, this is a situation, too. The last two games have been desperation games for you. You know you have to come away with Ws. Yeah, for sure. We're, we're fighting for our lives here. We know every every game matters now, and uh, I think if we just stick to our game, we'll be fine. Thanks very much. Thank you. I like the extra microphone coming from the bench here, too. We are ready to go for period number two. So, too, is RJ Broadhead and Louis DeBrusque. Players are getting too used to you, Rob. Down by the benches, both teams having some fun. It's good to see they can smile and joke around and be relaxed. Game six, an elimination game. And if you're really getting down to brass tacks, Louie, you could call it a must win for both teams. Obvious for Sault Ste. Marie, they have to win or this series is over. And for Erie, they don't really want to go back to Sault Ste. Marie for Game 7. There was no tougher building to win in in the OHL than the SR Center this season. They call it the Hound Pound for a reason. And it is a real difficult building to play in, and they play very well there. You're right, I do believe that both teams are looking at, as, at this game as a must win, and they're playing like it. Nick Baptiste, six goals in this series. Darnell Nurse in his face. Crowd just begging for a penalty here at the Erie Insurance Arena. Aaron Radish drops it up high to Brinkett. Sends Dylan Strome by himself, one on three. Gets it past Darnell Nurse, chases after it himself. Jared McCann was there to help out his captain and leaves it along the boards for Nurse. Ellie gets to Nurse quickly, but he maintains possession of the puck. Now Ooh. up ahead to Kolchinski. That was Remy Ellie with a hit. Now yeah, Darnell Nurse. McCann, he had two points in the opening period. Anthony D'Angelo moves it in front of the net. It winds up with Connor McDavid. His feed to DeBrinket, taken away by Justin Bailey. And Bailey had to twist and turn and reach back and knock that away from the front of his net. That was turning out poorly. McCann slips and falls. Some open ice here for Ellie, and he's found an extra gear. Ellie, toe drag, takes a shot, but went right over to McDavid. It's in, or is it in? No, the light's on. The referee says no, it's not in. Connor McDavid to the front of the net. His backhand shot, his stick was almost shattered by... I can't believe how hard that slash was on the stick, actually. He couldn't get anything good away. As far as the shot's concerned, you can hear it down there. Every time the puck's in a defensive zone, the whacking and hacking of sticks, and that one there just denying McDavid from going to the net. That one was close on the line. Yuri coming out firing here in the second period. Murphy goes cross ice. Jake Marchman... He's found a boost after his goal. Tucks it to the front of the net. That puck stayed out. The whistle is gone. The puck was fired down the ice. 
tons of action. I like this aggression from Erie, and what a nice toe drag move by Marshman. You score a goal and you start taking the net a little more often, and he almost walked that one out. Here's the chance a little early, a real good drive by Ellie. He's got McDavid going to the net. And this one's going to kind of get towards the net, a little ricochet tap, and then the rebound goes right back to Ellie. He puts it towards the net, and that looks like it doesn't cross the line. Good call by the referee off the post, on the line, and a nice little reach back there. And some help from the defender to get it right out of there, right away. So right on the line from first look. Here's a great view of it here. And that puck up on edge. Ooh, <laughs> doesn't get any closer than that, I don't think. <laughs> Especially on edge. How about the hands of Justin Bailey to reach in there, yeah. not push it any further like in a the surgeon. Net. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, like that's life or death right there as far as this game's going. The way it's going back and forth, they're going to take a long look at this one and make sure they made the right call. I do believe they have. It was really close, but I like the urgency in the second period. Here he's come out. They're forechecking. They're pouncing on pucks. They're attacking, and here it is again as it bounces on edges and just catches that inner little bit of plastic there and I think kind of made it go out instead of in. A break for Sault Ste. Marie. And they'll take it. That is about as close as you can get. You're right, Louie. I just man. still see some... I don't see any white on the other side of the puck, so I don't believe it has. it's gone fully over the line. And yeah, look at that. What a perfect little play to kind of... and dangerous. So look, we talked about Ellie having to get going. You heard Todd Warner talk about him, a guy that he would like to see get more activated, score some goals, and he's had a much better start to this game. The first period, he was getting in, forechecking, using his body to, to check. And, you know, I know he's 81. You say a guy like Hosa, you know, that two-way player. Get in there, be physical, use your offensive abilities when you have them. I like that little toe drag going to the net. He got a second opportunity. He was in the right spot, but he's not going to get a word to go here, but I like his game so far. And, He's going to want to try and keep that momentum going forward. That's the way it's gone for Remy Alley over the last now 13 games. Just can't buy one, not even by a millimeter. I like this. Get him right back out there. That line was was hopping. They're moving their feet. You have Trump. You might as well leave him, right? No question about it. McDavid to break it. Alley McDavid from a sharp angle. That was stopped by Halverson. Nick Ritchie gets that motor running. Up to center ice. Gertler poked at it. Don A got it out of harm's way. At least the other way. He stops as he gets in over the line. Put it into the skates of Gertler and Debrinket. Gabe Gertler slows things down for the Greyhound. Now picks up a little speed as he gets through center. Gives it over to Ritchie. Hard shot stopped by Williams. Gertler in the corner. Knocked away from him. Debrinket up ahead to Ellie. McDavid still out there. Long shot from Ellie. Bounces around in front. Ellie gets it back on the backhand, but can't get it through to the net. McDavid gets in front of Moore. He had support. It's Anthony D'Angelo. Three Greyhounds in over the line, and they're offside. The McDermott didn't like that late shot by Darnell Nurse. Goes over and has a little word with him there. A nice little rush before that by Gertler getting up the ice. You know, a guy in his first year in the Ontario Hockey League, a little bit older at 19, played a year at University of Minnesota. But he has that confidence. He's a smaller guy, speedy. He gets the puck, takes it out of harm's way. You can see that Erie was being a little aggressive. Darnell Nurse after that shot kind of sticks around a little bit. Maybe see if you can suck someone into taking a little bit of a, a penalty on him. But nobody bites. A little gamesmanship out there. Getting word that Sault Ste. Marie is rocking tonight, watching their Greyhounds, hoping to see them back for Game 7. Yeah! This one's still up for grabs in Game 6. Jake Marchman, his shot doesn't get through, following up an opportunity for Patrick Murphy. Danley, put Murphy behind the net. Taylor Radish can't find any room with Jared McCann. Marchman takes a hit from Ganley. Puck goes to an open corner. Darren Radish sprints down to come up with it. Now it's over on the other side. Sergei Tolchinsky trying to spin away from Radish. Got away from him, and here's Colton White to lead things out for Sault Ste. Marie. From the left wing side, gets to the corner. That's where he stops. Behind the net, McDermott knocks it away from Tolchinsky, and this puck is lofted up to the line. Just does come out. Boom, bunting. Hit from both sides and eliminated. But here come the Greyhounds. There's a shot and a save. Oh, and a rebound. There was an open net gaping at Spears. The puck was rolling, and he couldn't get a lot on it. 
Great okay. chance for Sault Ste. Marie and some bad luck for them. Tough tread note there, too, along that far wall. <laughs> yeah, right in front of Sault Ste. Marie. Bodies going bench. everywhere. Here's made a pass to Bailey. It was in tight, kind of handcuffed him. Addressed the puck forward. Another feed. This will be right on goal. Halverson stops it. Good puck playing goaltender. Hard cross ice pass. Bailey touches it to D'Angelo. Good passing by the Greyhounds here. Richie shot. That's off a stick. It goes wide. Gertler tried to center it again. Couldn't do it. Baptiste was thrown. That pass into the skates of D'Angelo. Halverson will have a chance to play it, and he wants to get it on the stick of his defenseman, D'Angelo. Pops out again. Baptiste. He can't find Betts. D'Angelo spins away from Betts. Made a good chip to center ice. Bailey, long shot, stopped by Williams. Takes it over to the sideboards, Dylan Stroll. He can't maneuver the puck pass to Blee. Gertler carrying things on down there for the Greyhounds. Had some help from Darnell Nurse. Now Richie's shot. That was kicked out by Williams. Remy Elliott skating better in this game than we've seen over the last few. First man back there, but Moore got the puck from him. And Richie, he's got a burst of speed this time. Ducks first round pick. He lofts one in, but that was wide of the goal. That'll come all the way outside the line. McCann feeds it back. Moore covering up for Darnell Nurse. Now Nurse is back there. And Nurse hears the booze when he touches the puck here at Erie Insurance Arena. Again, bounce pass. Doesn't find Sanisha. It's not icing. McDermott had to take that pass and escapes. McCann chipped it loose, looking short side. Williams had to be cautious. Comes back to Ganley. Low shot from Gettinger. That's a good save. Puck sits there. And McCann another chance. That was a crafty pass. Ganley misses the net for that flash. Now Donne rocks it around and gets it out. Good chances for the Greyhounds. Nurse. Takes that puck down. Somehow he spotted Tolchinska rather hidden Verbeek up there. Verbeek with a burst of speed. And there's a save by Williams. Williams is down. His glove is off. Now some fans starting to throw some debris on the ice. They are irate. Verbeek with the flyby. But the penalty hasn't been called here. Williams is still down. Crowd can't believe it. Devin Williams making sure his equipment's on right, and Verbeek takes the feet out from Williams. Well, I'm behind the Sioux bench, and they have just been informed that it is a slew foot with Sheldon Keith. An unfortunate call that comes your way in a very tight and a very competitive game. That's the nature of the playoffs. We got to uh, we got to deal with it. Big kill coming up here. This is our this is our moment. We got to rise up to this right here. Thanks, coach. That is right in the action for Rob Falls. Yeah, I was going to say a heated coach right there after finding out that Verbeek's going to get five minutes in the game. He's out of the out of this game now for that slew foot on the goaltender going through. I didn't really know. Think it was a five minute major when I first saw it. But he did come through there pretty quickly. It's a dangerous play on a goaltender. They want to protect the goaltenders, and here he gets a power play. It's a five-minuter in a huge time of this game. There was initially going to be a call. Yeah, there was no hands up. Power play's been so good for Erie in this series. Nick Baptiste, one of the guys that's been able to put the puck in the net. Seven for 16 in the series, this Erie power play, and they've got some time to do some damage. Baptiste, middle of the ice, stopped by Halverson. Rebound tucked just wide by DeBrinket. Thurman waits at the blue line. He's the lone forward out there for Erie. Dylan Strom takes a shot. That's stopped by Halverson. McDavid has to deal with D'Angelo, and D'Angelo played well in the corner. Knocked McDavid off the puck and cleared it out. What a pivotal point here in game six of the Western Conference Final. Erie leads this series three games to two. We're tied tonight in the second period. A five-minute major called on Hayden Verbeek for slew footing. Erie goalie Devin Williams. Justin Bailey forced Williams to do a spin around, but not bad. McDavid up ahead to Debrinkin. 51 goals, 104 points as a rookie. 
Still with the brinket despite Ganley's efforts. Nurse moves it to Bailey, and he shows some soft hands, lifting that backhand over everybody. No support at all there for the brinket. He gets into the corner, gets double team puck down the ice for Erie. They have to be a little more aggressive on the support. Get full possession before you start looking for somewhere to go. Remielli, last man back, works his way into the Greyhound zone. Two of them got over there to greet him. Ganley wraps it around. Moore might get a chance. He was pressured quickly. Got a pass to McCann. The puck did come outside the line, despite an effort by Darren Radish to keep it in. Right on the line. That's a tricky one there, too. That one gets by him. It's a breakaway the other way. Good penalty killing here by the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. And you heard Sheldon Keefe say, this is where we need to rise up as a team. A little bit of adversity here with a five-minute major in a game that's really tight. Go out there and be really strong on the penalty kill. So far, so good. Still a lot of time on the clock here. The penalty to repeat. Mo McDavid right now for the Otters. He was out there for almost the first two minutes of the power play. Curtis McDermott backtracks. Pass ahead to Radish. Remy Allen has time to shoot. It's nowhere near the net, and this will do the Greyhounds a favor. Just a bit outside. <laughs> Williams sets up shot behind his net. Waits for his power play unit to make the change and get out there. And it's the number one unit going now. Travis Dermott, two points in this game. Dermott going wide. He's generated a lot of the offense for the defenseman for Erie in this postseason. Connor McDavid can't get to the net. Makes a pass to the break and he scores! Erie leads 3-2. to two. But I'll tell you, what a terrific pass by Connor McDavid. Makes it look so simple, just a little backhand pass through traffic. The break at 51 goals to 16-year-old in the Ontario Hockey League this year. And he just threads the needle on the tape, far side jams at home. And you mentioned it, RJ, for Dabrinkit, needs to get involved, start scoring goals the way he did in the regular season. And he buries a big one for his team there and a perfect pass from Connor McDavid. 19 game point streak now for McDavid. That dates back to the regular season. It's still a power play and lots of time left. Five minute major, just half done now. Here he's got one, and they have the lead. The Brinkett, he's with Strom and McDavid, Baptiste and Dermott. Greyhound's penalty kill has to be perfect now. McDavid goes to the line, puck settles in time for Dermott, gets it back to McDavid. He wanted to find Baptiste, look out here. McCann and Moore, they might sense a chance shorthanded. Darnell Nurse, he's coming in too. McCann's got some space to work. Made one move, now Moore's in front, but he couldn't pull the trigger. Here he has the puck. Strom's up behind everybody. Got it in behind the Greyhounds net. Darnell Nurse comes up with it in the corner. Now to McCann. Greyhounds could use a change here with these penalty killers. McDavid. Strom. His pass in front. McCann was down. Blocked that pass. McDermott at the line. That shot's deflected and goes over the net. Minute and a half to go in the power play. Strom over to McDavid. Couple of strides toward the net. McDermott now. There's a shot and a save by Halverson. Big save by Halverson there to deny the shot through the point. A little bit of traffic in front of him as well. We're going to isolate Connor McDavid again as he just kind of, again, we talk about that acceleration into a puck. He finds it, finds open space. Couple steps. He sees the pass the whole way and makes it perfect on the tape. And it's in the back of the net. Minute 25 to go in the five-minute major to Hayden Verbeek for slew footing Devin Williams. Greyhounds get an important clear. McDavid has stayed on the ice. The rest of the number one unit has taken a break. McDermott, his pass went errant. D'Angelo didn't get it deep. It's McDavid coming the other way. Working against D'Angelo. Big whack from D'Angelo. McDavid scores! Circles the net! McDavid gets another one on the power play! This place is going nuts. You talk about big players coming up big in big situations. It was almost a little bit of a waste of a five-minute power play for the Erie Otters, but Connor McDavid, an assist, and then he just takes this one to the horn. That wraparound we talk about, he loves to do this with his speed, with his reach. He takes a pretty vicious slash from D'Angelo on the stick once again, and somehow it doesn't break as he protects it a little bit and just carries it off the goaltender's pad into the back of the net, but we've seen him do that so often. That's not lucky, and a big goal for Connor McDavid. Two-goal lead for Erie. 
Two points for McDavid. He was held to just one assist in game five. So make that 11 of the last 14 games after only having one or fewer points that he gets a multiple point game. This is still a power play for just under a minute. Erie has capitalized twice in the major. Greyhounds have it inside the Erie zone. Crowd's been activated here at the Erie Insurance Arena. Travis Dermott, what a game he's having. Three points. Dylan Strom, long lead pass. That's too far to find McDavid. It's icing. You know, the thing that makes Connor McDavid so hard to, to handle is that he can just change his speed so quickly. Comes up the ice, he's such a good passer, you have to respect it. Two, three quick strides, and he's by it. D'Angelo's an excellent skater himself, so for him to be able to go wide like that, it's incredible how he can just accelerate through a turn and then at that speed, able to make a play like that. It was important for Erie to capitalize on that five-minute major. They got two. They now have nine power play goals in the series. What a difference that's been. Five on five, play's been dictated by the Greyhounds. Special teams has favored the Otters. Remy Alley. Not much time to go in the major now. Oh, down alone past everybody. It was Bats, and there was a late whistle. And Anthony D'Angelo has a reputation, maybe coming off the rails sometimes. He got in there in a hurry, and Sault Ste. Marie needs him on the ice more now than ever. Well, they had the right guy on the ice. Here he did, but McDermott came right in there right away, and this is where better heads have to prevail. This is such a huge time in this game, and especially for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, too, for D'Angelo. He is a guy that gets fired up out there. He's going to protect his goaltender. It wasn't a slap shot. It was a little backhand, but it was just the fact that he finished through after a fairly early whistle, and they're still going at it again here. He wasn't going to take no for an answer. He was going to get in there, and that's that fieriness that he plays with. That's where one of his teammates would have been wise to get him out of there. He circled around the pack, came in, There's a knocked ton Dermot of time down. In this game. He's got a penalty. At least one. Get him out of there right now because you don't want him taking that extra one again. This is what you love about D'Angelo as well, too. He's an emotional guy. He plays on that edge. He's an elite talent. He's a, a, a great skater. But this is an early whistle. Right there. So, I mean, he knew that the whistle was taken. That just kind of throws it at the net. It wasn't a hard one. But it was just that little bit of a, hey, I'm going to see if this one will slip into the net. Both tenders don't like any puck going into the net in practice, let alone in a game situation. It's just that little psychological warfare that goes on the ice. Sheldon Keith talked about it to Rob Falls in that interview just a few minutes ago. They have to deal with this situation. They've allowed two power play goals, and now it's a two-man advantage oh. for 21 seconds. Chris Knobloch has his big guns over there. Drawing up a plan. I didn't realize it was uh, it would be a five on three. I thought they both got penalties, but it doesn't look that way. You're right, RJ. Right now, it's a five on three, and that one backfired in a hurry. And they gave him the extra one for just going a little bit overboard. On the board, it's got Connor Boland as the penalty. D'Angelo's in the box. Five on three for a few more seconds. Ten of them. Thurman wraps it around. Connor McDavid heads to the corner. Darnell Nurse not far from him. McDavid behind the net. Williams banging his stick, warning the penalty's almost over. Strom can't shoot. Tried to make a pass. Got the puck back. Strom has time. There's a shot. Saved by Halverson. Greyhounds get the puck and send it down the ice. Dylan Strom. He dumps it into the far corner. Tyler Ganley comes up with it. Gettinger along the boards. He sneaks it. Pass McDavid down the ice. First minute of this power play almost gone. Connor McDavid. Starts in front of his own net. Crowd buzzes when he gets the puck, and why not? First to speed. Now he's in, still with the puck. Drops it off for Strom, and that opened up some ice for him. Fake shot from Dermott. He backtracks to the line. 
McDavid, Strom, pass in front. The Brinkett reaches for it, not clear. Gets to the line, and Dermott moves it over to McDavid. Top of the circle. Barsay's pass. That redirects down low. Bat Baptiste was ready to fire if that pass had a got to him. Puck gathered in by Dupuis, and he sends it down the ice. 25 seconds to go in the power play. But a real good defending by Sault Ste. Marie, especially down below the hash marks near the net, not allowing anything to get through, no lanes to open up, and winning the loose puck battles and putting it down the ice. Remy Ellis. Behind the net to Radish. Spears comes up with it. He shovels it out to center. And that is... It for the power play. Bolin steps back on the ice. A couple of power play goals for the Erie Otters on that five minute power play, and they lead. Connor McDavid, goal and an assist in this second period that has just under seven minutes to go in it. Now up to 39 points in the playoffs. It's a two-goal lead for the Erie Otters. Five on five. First time we've had that in a while. Top scoring team in the OHL has to get it going now. There's a good quick shot and slot there too. It looked like a pretty sharp angle, but got away quickly. McCann has had all kinds of opportunities. He scored once. He has an assist in this game. Arnell Nurse behind his own net. Don't have to tell you who has the puck when you hear the boos here in Erie. Deep for D'Angelo. Picked off by McDavid. Remy Alley comes in. He snaps a shot. That's stopped by Halverson. Handcuffed him a bit, but Michael Bunting came back to help his goalie out and plucked that puck out of the blue paint. D'Angelo. Waits. Let's the Brinkett go by. Still waiting for someone to open up. It's Tolchinski. There's a shot from Gertler. That hit his stick. Went off the glass. Bunting. He's knocked down. Well, Bunting still working hard down there. Tolchinski trying to get it loose. D'Angelo wouldn't let that puck get past center. He sprints back in the area. Hasn't taken many shots. It goes up and over the glass. And then D'Angelo and McDermott have some words. And D'Angelo's right on the line right now. Erie continuing to get chances. Sheldon Keith needs Anthony D'Angelo on the ice, but there will be two more minutes where he won't have him because of this. You know, sometimes he can't tame the honey badger that is Angelo De <laughs> that is D'Angelo right now. He's just all over it. And you know. Big McDermott goes over and gives him a little verbal abuse first and dangles his gloves and D'Angelo bites and goes right after him. They're going to both go to the box for unsportsmanlike conduct. In this game, probably a fairly even switch, but D'Angelo is that guy right now that they need to be that offensive force coming up with the puck down by two goals. And as you mentioned, RJ, he's right on that line from internal combustion. Nick Ritchie controlling the puck all the way into the Otter zone. Ritchie gets it again. That pass. Just stays onside. Good work by Darnell Nurse to get it back down there. Four on four. McDermott, D'Angelo in the penalty box. Connor McDavid trying to go wide on Nurse. Not around him, but by the time he did, there was no more real estate to get to the net. McDavid, maybe aware, his team's up by two seconds. Are valuable to the Greyhounds. 25 goals, 89 points this year for Anthony D'Angelo. Led all defenseman scores in the Ontario Hockey League. He can create all kinds of offense, even if he isn't 100%. It's actually good to see him come down and take that shot the last shift on the ice before he got into it with McDermott there. He attempted to take the shot through, so seeing him starting to shoot the puck means he's jumping up a little bit more and starting to get activated. Darnell Nurse tried to pull him out of that altercation with McDermott so the captain realizes that D'Angelo is close. Aaron Radish moves it back to Dermott. Greyhounds had the honors in their own end but couldn't get anything to the net. 25 seconds to go in this four on four and just over four minutes to go in the second period. 
Pass comes out to center. That's where Nick Baptiste, the third round pick of the Sabres, is. Travis Dermott. His feet's off a skate. Winds up with Darren Radish. Wraps it around. Nobody there for the Otters. Connor Bowling sidesteps Dylan Strom. Got it up to White. Here's Jared McCann. He's created lots of chances in this game. White spins in the corner. Genovese trying to stay with Fulton White, the defenseman, who's controlling down low. Got it in front of the net. Penalties are over. D'Angelo's out there. And he's got the puck, and he's skating well with it. Drops it back to the line. Nobody there. White to Mercier. Leaves it for White. That pass didn't get Danny Greyhounds. They were on a change. Dylan Strom's at center. Mercier didn't let him get far with the puck. Strom takes it back. Hunting. He had enough of that. Came and stole it. Now he sends Brian Moore up ahead. Drops it back for Bunting. Side steps bats. Bunting shot. Stopped by Williams. That was a rebound. Fury knocked it to the boards. Not out though. More shots off the skate. That comes out. It's going to become even more important here as this game ticks away for Erie Payne to Bryce getting bodies in front of those shots, making every opportunity the Greyhounds get a tougher one to achieve. Darnell Nurse, he's waiting, doesn't like what he sees yet. Wants to get this change in up at the Erie Blue Line is more. He has to come to center to try to get that puck, but it was bouncing. He couldn't control it. Patrick Murphy, he's stood up by Ganley, loses his stick. Ganley has the puck, and now he gives it to Nick Ritchie. Ritchie wants to shoot. Sharp angle, too sharp to shoot. Wraps it around. Williams was down, had that side covered. Moore gives it to Gertler. He can't get to the front of the net. Two otters are there. McDermott has the puck. Now it's taken from him. It's still bouncing around down there. McDermott gets it again and goes off the glass, down the ice. To negate the icing, it's Taylor Radish, and he doesn't get there in time. Good sequence right there and almost able to get down there. D'Angelo back on the ice. Looks like he's calmed down. When you look at the numbers for him, 51 points in 26 games since coming over to Sault Ste. Marie to get things going in the regular season. He's carried it over as the offensive leader for defensemen in the playoffs. This is a guy that can put up numbers, can log time, and loves to have the puck on his stick. And that's when he's at his best when he's doing that. When he starts to get carried away with the extracurricular stuff, you know, you kind of like the drive, kid, but there's more important things at stake right now in the game. He's at his best when he can be right on that line. Yeah. The on the good is, side of the line. That's right. They don't need him to go over it. See, he's flying now. He's jumped into the rush. That Another upper body shot. injury is hurting him, but he's shooting the puck a lot more now. They fired him up. You wonder if that's a good thing. He can be great when he's feisty. Darnell Nurse teamed up with D'Angelo right now, and Nurse takes his time before he makes the pass. Got it to Jared McCann. He stick handles through center ice. D'Angelo's open. Cross ice feed. A good one to Tolchinski. And his shot is off of DeBrinket and goes over the glass. You know, they always say that the great players have a knack for knowing when they need to get themselves emotionally into a hockey game. And D'Angelo, he's gotten himself into this one. Every time he's touched the puck now, he's starting to make things happen. He's rushing. This is a perfect pass here. And this is where he's really skilled. Finding a seam, putting it through. A good chance with bodies driving to the net that gets directed up over top of the glass. But for D'Angelo now, it's all about the game. Moving forward, making plays like that, and trying to get his team back into this one. Greyhounds trailing by two. Just over a minute to go in the second period. Puck moved down low by Nick Betts. Cleared again by Sault Ste. Marie. And here they come. Blake Spears drops it off for Bailey. That's redirected on Williams. And he holds the glove up. That's where the puck is. Start to see a little momentum build here for Sault Ste. Marie, much like game five. And in the Sioux on Thursday night. They dictated play with their transitional game, driving pucks to the net. And this one here takes a funny hop off the skate of the defender backing up. I believe it was Dermott that it hits his skate. And a good little reaction there. To be able to snatch that out of the air by Williams. Exactly one minute to go in the second. D'Angelo's back out there, has the puck at the blue line. Gabe Gertler can't get it through to the net. D'Angelo takes a shot. That was Bouncing off some bodies, didn't get through to Williams. Have to get it to Darnell Nurse. We'll see a lot of Nurse and D'Angelo as this game progresses. Greyhounds 
Trailing by two. That's not insurmountable for this club with all their offense. Ten players had over 20 goals this season. But David moves it to an open spot in a foot race. But David got a shot away. And he was up against Nurse and D'Angelo and still created that chance. It was amazing. He gave himself an area pass. Kelly and Nurse, they're battling down low. D'Angelo takes a hit from Debrinket. Pass up ahead. Moore has it. And of Aces controls for the Otters. Donne spins away from Richie. Otters just want this period to come to an end, and there's the signal that it has. And Richie, one last push on Genovese before he heads off to the second intermission. Well, this is what makes this kid so special is his speed, but his ability to think the game. He knows he can't get through this wall that's Darnell Nurse at the blue line, so what does he do? Watch this little tiny area pass gets going, his feet moving, and drives right by everybody. Two tremendous skaters right there that he blew by and created that opportunity. McDavid had two points on the power play in that period. It's a two-goal lead for the Otters, Jeff. <laughs> My head is still spinning like a top, so you flip it to an area and then make sure you're the first person in that area and then almost score to make it 5-2, but it is 4-2. When you're Connor McDavid, uh, you do whatever you want. John Shannon, Todd Warren. We'll get to Connor McDavid here in a couple of seconds. But up first, uh, capital D discipline was the story of that period, John. You know, we, the last time we saw a game in Erie, it was a lack of discipline from Sault Ste. Marie that allowed Erie to win 7-5. Lack of discipline by Erie and Sault Ste. Marie extended the series, and now we're seeing a mirror image of game four. Verbeek goes, and Great I mean, break. I think it's a penalty. I don't think there's much doubt about it. And whether the arm was up or not, Goal consultation, that's going to hurt. And you knew as soon as you saw D'Angelo on the bench yelling like that, that he was on the verge of, what is it? On the edge of internal combustion, as Louis said. That's I love right. It. So, <laughs> and, and, and this is just silly. Yeah. This is just silly. Yeah. Sheldon Keith knows that if his team is going to win, they're only down by two. They're the highest scoring team in the league. They can score but, at will. You, you can't do that stuff. But isn't that, you're Kyle Raft, the general manager of the Sault Ste. Marie Grand, isn't that the risk that you absorb when you make that trade to bring in well, D'Angelo, though? But, like, but, you, I mean, know that's, that, you know that's part of his game. But it, it, it's too late now. I mean, you're not, I mean, you're in the playoffs. And, and this is one of those things that you, you have to hope that the relationship between your coach and one of your star players says, hey, listen, you know, stay out of the penalty box. We, we get one goal, we're within a goal, and, and anything can happen. We thought these outbursts were done when he left Sarnia, and it appeared they were at least. So I'm sure Sheldon Keefe's going to have some, you know, words for his player D'Angelo between periods. He can't have it. If they get, if they get back in this game, they got to have him playing with the puck and making plays, not getting involved in all the extra stuff. And give give the referees some credit, calling McDermott and D'Angelo yeah. for the the offsetting yeah. minors, Trying settled everything reduce. down. And by the way, that seemed to change the momentum back to Sault Ste. Marie at one point, and they mm -hmm. outshot them five to two the last five minutes of the period. I don't know how to introduce 97 anymore, so Todd, uh, Connor McDavid. <laughs> well, we saw at the end, I mean, what a play at the end when he just flips it to space and then goes after it, but a number of great plays tonight here taking it wide, and that's Nurse again on him, and he finds the break in a little soft area there, and that's a finisher's goal right there. He loves it. Late, picking off a pass here, waiting in the weeds, transition game, that's where he makes his money, and here he takes it wide. He gets a favorable bounce off the skate of Bolin, but nonetheless taking it to the net. That's good stuff. A little shake and bake at the blue line. And the wraparound that goes in. Like that? Uh, How many? So, so many. Too fast from post to post. Goalies can't do it. And here, here's the area. late, just chipped the area. And that's D'Angelo, who's a great skater, beats him to it. If that goes in, it'll be lights out for Sault Ste. Marie. So you're an Oilers fan. You're watching that right now. What's going through <laughs> your mind? Have a look at these numbers if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan as well. Uh, McDavid playoffs versus regular season. The numbers are outstanding when you look at regular season points per game, 2.55. But the checking gets tighter in the playoffs, right, guys? The points well, per game goes down. Get better. Uh, Two points. Tell you what, I was McDavid. I was quite impressed in that period. A couple of times, just saw him in the corner with the with the physical play too. This guy's not afraid of the physical play. He's so good down low. We've talked about this how many times, you know, off the cycle and, and with big, strong guys leaning on him, he seems yeah. to gain traction and gain momentum. He's as good as he is off the rush. He's better off the cycle. We should say a couple things about Travis Dermott as well. Uh, three points uh, on the <clears throat> night so far, and, and he's been a catalyst for Erie from, from the beginning of the season, really. Games like this, you need your best players to be your best players. And this is a guy that missed the prospects game, and he's a steady climber up the draft rankings. Here, a little play, face off play, switches wow. lanes with Baptiste, and that's a slick pass back door to get things started tonight. Head up, 
carrying the puck up the ice. Jay McKee calls him the ankle breaker because he can shake guys off. And this is when they needed to get set up on the power play. It's Dermott that makes a nice play to get it to the other side of the ice. And who gets it? Connor McDavid on the goal for Debrinket. So great start, great game. Big players come to play in big games. I, am, I still don't know how he wasn't invited to prospects. I, I'm, well, I'm still shaking my head at that one. Uh, you know what? Doesn't matter. I no. think he's. I think he's. I think he's proven to everybody that he probably deserves to be drafted. What second round? Someone's going to get a steal in the for second sure. round. Heck of Travis a player. The, Heck uh, of a player. Prospect from Newmarket. Okay, four two Otters. After 40 minutes of play, Connor's world. We just watching it, skating it, <laughs> scoring it. Busy Sunday, get up early for some footy. Sportsnet World, 10.30 Eastern. Tottenham faces off against Man City. Jays and Indians, 12.30 Eastern so on that early, one. Jeff. Sportsnet, oh, you know, John. <laughs> I like to be, as they say, controversial. <laughs> How do they say it in the premiership? Controversy. There we go. There we go. Uh, Bolts and Habs, lightning up on that series. one nothing Wild and the Blackhawks. Yes, we have lots of hockey tomorrow. And it uh, finishes up with the Flames facing off against the Anaheim Ducks. That game at 9.30 Eastern. Time now for the play of the second period. Brought to you by Stag Chili Saves for Success program, where saves made will result in contributions up to $30,000 to minor hockey teams. StagChili.ca for details. Todd Warner. Who else but Connor McDavid? A little shake and bake coming across the blue line in the wraparound goal. But you don't need shake and bake on your Stag Chili, John. Oh, my. It's fine by itself. <laughs> and so is this guy. That is your stag chili play of the period. How are you going to go with a wrap of a spoon around a can of stag chili? And oh, man. We've created Connor a monster. McDavid, Alex Debrinkit. Otter's up 4 2, third period still coming up. <laughs> Man, I love that song. Time now for Road Warriors, brought to you by Cooper Tires. Cooper builds tires for the way real drivers really drive. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Have a look at this. Road Warriors, your Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. When out shooting their opponents on the road, they're 4-2. and two. When outshot by the opponent, well, they have yet to be outshot by <laughs> wow. the opponents on the road in these playoffs. 21-18, by the way, shots on goal. Favoring the Erie Otters as we speak right now. As we head to the third period here in a couple of seconds, what are you looking for in the potentially final frame of the season for the Hounds? I expect Sheldon Keefe will have given his team an earful about their discipline, and I think we'll see a much different team here in the third for the Sioux Grounds. You know, if, if Sioux Seri puts on some level of attack, you have to think that Devin Williams is going to have to play his best. He's been very good this whole series. I think he was a question mark when the series started. Yeah. This is going to have to be his best period. And does it have to be the best period for Brandon Halverson? Well, that's a given. All right, so we go to RJ, Louie, and Falzi in a couple of moments. Will it be Handshake Alley or will we see a Game 7? The answer, next. Tomorrow, the Flames and Ducks are back at a Game 2 of their series. That's at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 o'clock Pacific on Sportsnet and Rogers Game Center Live. Flames will... Try to get back in that series. Sault Ste. Marie is going to try to get back in this one tonight. They trail by two. The Otters could move on to the OHL final. One period to go. Here's Rob. With Alex Debrinkit, got a power play goal, a huge power play goal in that second period. You guys had to take advantage when you got that five, that, that five minute penalty against the Sioux. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a, it was a huge power play, and uh, we capitalized twice on it. So I think we did our job there. Tell me what the instructions were by the coaching staff to you guys in that intermission. Uh, I mean, play, play our own game and uh, don't let the, don't let anything uh, get to you. Just just keep playing your game. Was it quiet in there or was it pretty rah rah? Uh, I think it was a normal atmosphere. Uh, I mean, it was yeah, it was pretty normal in there. But uh, I, I know everyone's wanting to play the same way they've been playing. Alex, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks. Well, I don't know how it could be normal with this noise. They are ready to go here in Erie for the third period. Let's join R.J. Broadhead, Louis DeBrusque.
Rob, a little bit of that might come from their coach, Chris Knobloch, always very even keeled. Wasn't in the first period. A little bit of an outburst there by him, which was... You don't see that off. Yeah. Not really him, but yes, he, he, it's amazing how calm he's been in, in situations, and I think you're right, the team... Ooh, big hit to start things off. And a penalty coming up to Sault Ste. Marie. An interference call. Shook him up, too. That's was bowling just right off the whistle, stepped up, and don't think that Ben saw him coming with this puck. He was waiting for the puck, and he missed it. And after he missed it, he finished the check. And I, and I do believe that Bowen was just coming through to finish. Oh, it's, I don't think that's an interference call. I think that's just finishing after it touches a stick. He didn't have full possession of it, but he certainly touched the puck, and it was a pretty clean hit. <laughs> Shot from McDavid. Figured you'd like the right, rough stuff. Tough on I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he did touch the puck. And, and, and for Bowen, he's stepping up, trying to be physical, shoulder to the chest. It was an unfortunate bounce off the stick. Third period. Greyhounds trailing by two. It's a power play for the Erie Otters, and their power play has been spectacular. Nine goals with the man advantage in this series. Greyhounds need a stop. Strom moves it ahead to DeBrinket. Angelo pokes it past him. Now there's a battle along the boards. Baptiste. Moves it back to the corner to bring it on it quickly. McDavid plucks it loose behind the net. He goes all the way back to the line to Dermott. Strom's open. Couple of strides toward the corner. Closing on him is Gertler shields the puck, and Connor McDavid now has the puck. He goes to Dylan Strom. Pass off the stick of Darnell Nurse. This is a two-on-one. Gertler's tired. Nurse takes it in. Got a shot away, Williams was way out, made the save. And McDavid's back the other way, cuts around. Bailey can't get a shot, Strom's following up. That one's off the stick of Bailey and goes wide. Dabrinkit takes a look at the line, lots of time for Dermott. Saucers it over to the right wing side where Dylan Strom heads to the blue line. Takes a look in, made one move but then lost the puck, a spin move by Nurse. He's still got some energy, he was on the last rush. He's on this one, too. Bailey made an effort to stay onside, but couldn't do it. Oh, yeah, dangerous plays are Darnell Nurse just sniffing to get up the ice. Didn't like that offside call. Felt that he jumped over the line on time. But here's the first one here, a two-on-one develops. Great job by Nicholas Baptiste to get back, nullify the two-on-one. And that forces Nurse to shoot. And on the second one down the way, it creates the offside. And here's some good defense coming the other way. Bailey with a real good stick to reach in and deny that attack. Power play dwindling on the Erie Otters. Aaron Radish to send. Sends it into the Greyhound zone. That'll wrap all the way around. Kept in by McDermott, but Ganley's going to make things difficult. McDermott's knocked down. He's lost his stick. Crowd wanting another penalty. They're not going to get it this time. The infraction to Boland is over. He's back on the ice, and the Greyhounds dodged a bullet there. They're going to have a power play themselves. Spears was knocked down. It was Ellie who knocked him down. And now Ellie's heading to the penalty box. Interference call going to Ellie. Just kind of interfere with Spears a little bit. The speeds are going through into the offensive zone. Spears has been real solid all year long for Sheldon Keith. He's a two-way centerman winger. Can play both positions. And as he goes through here, just a little bump. You know, just that little pick that you try and get away with to give your partner a little bit of time to get up the ice and he gets caught with the referee standing five feet away. Special teams, it's something Sheldon Keefe has said his team needs to win. Here's a chance, they killed off a penalty, now can they score on the power play? D'Angelo takes a look at the net, makes a pass to McCann. His feet in front, it's bouncing around, lines up on the Otter's stick. It's cleared down the ice by Fellows. Sits behind the Greyhound's net. That's where Anthony D'Angelo retrieves it. He's out to center. Down the right wing side, Sinition. Made a pass in front, but nobody was there for the Greyhounds. Back to the line, Moore. Makes a short pass to McCann. Kolchinski trying to move that puck away from Genovese. The Otters penalty killers relentless, and they get the puck, and it's down the ice again. That was a real strong closure there by Radish to just pounce on. Kolchinski, once he fumbled that puck just a little bit, puts it down the ice. D'Angelo and Nurse. Now Richie. Here's D'Angelo. 
Can't shoot. McDavid's watching him. Really aggressive. Bunting. He's on the right wing side. He can't get a lane. Nurse, no shot. Bunting now takes a look at the net. Had 37 in the regular season. He scored in three straight. Couldn't get it through, and McDavid got it down the ice. Important to good sticks to just deny those little lanes that open up. And again, a good job there by Erie just to be in the right position. Bailey trying to enter the zone with some speed. Halverson will have to come out and play this puck. Jake Marchment was the closest to him. Eluded him with a pass. D'Angelo. He hustles through center ice. D'Angelo, sharp angle. That's caught by Williams. And he stops playing with 19 seconds to go in the power play. Shows you how effortless D'Angelo can get up the ice. And another shot that he's taken. We've seen him take more shots here. Much more than in game five. He was rushing the puck up and looking to pass. Now he's looking to shoot. Two goals down in the third period. Upper body injury or not, he's going to fire the puck. He's feeling no pain in this game. Maybe a chance off the faceoff here for the Greyhounds. Clean win. D'Angelo's in. Stopped by Williams. What a faceoff win. And then Nurse knocks it in front of the net. Might have hit something. The bottom line is it's in the back of the net. And the Hounds are within one. It's a huge goal for Sault Ste. Marie, and they capitalize on the power play. A, a real good opportunity for D'Angelo right off the faceoff. And for Darnell Nurse, he's been sniffing all series long, getting up in the rush, getting pucks to the net. This one here, he gets a little lucky as it's a knuckler that has a little drop to it. And it might have deflect off Radish in front as it goes in, but the one hopper, D'Angelo first, big save on there. And then for Nurse, just tees it up, doesn't get all of it, but gets it to the net and scores. Arnell Nurse coming through with a big goal. That's his first of the series. First in six games, second of the postseason. Points aside, Nurse's presence in this series has been crucial for the Greyhounds. Played over 30 minutes in games four and five, and he's going to be certainly there in this one as he's barely left the ice. Murphy dumps it into the Greyhounds' end. This is where the Otters want to keep it. Want to sustain some pressure down there. Murphy gets to it in the corner. Pokes it back down low. Marchment shields the puck. That pass will come outside the line. Three Otters are back there. Dermott spinning away from Dupuy. Some time for Joy Donning. Gets it up ahead to Strong. Holding red that play. Otters have it again, though. Donning, property of the New York Rangers. Travis Dermott accelerates through center ice. Gets it to Baptiste. Couldn't pull the trigger in time to get a shot on goal. Bunting quickly ahead to Tolchinski. Betts took a swipe at it, couldn't get the puck from him. Three Greyhounds here. Tolchinski falls though. And now Betts drives the other way for Erie. He's by himself and takes a long, low shot. That was wide of the net. Betts bumped in the corner. Not too front, but there's Michael Bunting to gain control for Sault Ste. Marie. Jared McCann. Bunting. He might have a chance here. Bunting cutting right in, and he can't beat Williams. An interference call coming up. I think it's going to Sault Ste. Marie, and it's going to be Bunting driving into the goalie. He took out Williams on the rush, and a great pass by McCann to send in Bunting. He doesn't like the call. He thought he was in tight, thought he made a move, which he did. Great save by Williams to stand his ground and make this save. Crucial time. And for McCann, just a perfect little dish into Bunting going in. He did cross-check through, and he makes contact with the goaltender. It's a good call by the referee. Could have stopped. He didn't. He's going to go to the box. He hopes for two. Usually in a third period, close game. Whistles are put away. These are penalties <laughs> they've had to call. And now it's the Erie Otters with a chance to take advantage of a man advantage. The Brinkett was thrown his timing off after Sault Ste. Marie got a stick on a puck. They want to get some penalty killers changed. Got three of them off. Dermott was quick to notice that. Got it into the Greyhound's end. Dylan Strom waits for it along the boards. It never came to him. Darnell Nurse got to it. Now Nurse trying to keep the puck away from the Otters. Moved it in front of his own net. A chance for Baptiste. 
And he was stopped by Brandon Halverson. Good chance there for Baptiste. A good hand eye to just give it a little chop as it's bouncing through the slot. Not easy to do. He had a player all over him, and he just kind of gets the little wedge shot towards the net. Through the traffic, and another good save there by Halverson. Minute 24 to go in this Erie power play. Face off win for the Greyhounds. Can they get it out? Nurse used some muscle to make a pass over to Dupuy, and he lofted it the rest of the way. Shots are 23 apiece in the game. Score is 4 3 for Erie. They lead this series three games to two. Strome to Dabrinkin. He directed a pass, but the Greyhounds were back. Gertler knocked it away. Bolin feeds it up to Darnell Nurse, killing a penalty. He was up at center. He sensed a chance. It's amazing. That guy is everywhere on the ice, and he never gets tired. Incredible athlete. Alex Dabrinkin. Strome heads to the net. So does Baptiste. Now Strom heads behind. The puck's there. Connor McDavid looks at the net. Instead, he goes back to McDermott. Baptiste. Wants to shoot, can't find a lane, now he's in the corner, can't shoot from there. Cross ice pass, McDavid, there's a shifty move. Bettinger bit on it, pass was elevated, comes back to McDermott. McDavid has it, now Baptiste, there's a pass to Strom. And getting back to distract him enough is Bolin. Possession here for the Otters on this power play. Not much time to go. There's a shot from the line saved by Halverson. Dabrinkit back to Baptiste. Had to take it in his skates. Into the corner now. Strom spins away but didn't have the puck. It's wrapped around the boards. Out of the penalty box is Bunting. And he's got lots of time to settle this puck down. Erie players out there are tired. Moore can't stick handle around Dabrinkit. Here's a fresh body off the bench. Patrick Murphy waits, shoots, blocked by Mercier. Kolchinski and Bunting. This is the big line for Sault Ste. Marie. Mercier wants a little something. There's a shot that's stopped by Williams. Bunting over to Tolchinski. He fires, but that's off Genovese and goes wide. McCann hustles to the corner. Bouncing around down there. Top line doing their thing again. They're controlling. Tolchinski to Bunting. Over to McCann. Can't pull the trigger on that down bouncing puck. Sent down the ice. It won't be icing. Radish. Gets there, Mercier ties him up. Archman following up. Radish trying to get to the front of the net, but there were four Greyhounds in front of him, and that didn't materialize. White circles back. Teammates are on a change. The Let's Go Otters chant starts to ring out at Erie Insurance Arena. It might be perfect timing, too. They're sensing that their team's kind of not getting too much offensive zone time. The Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds getting back to what they do best, transitional. Bad luck for Remielli. Tried to slap a puck in. His stick shattered. The puck sat there. He very nearly played it with the broken stick. Now here's McDavid. Waiting, waiting. Who's open? It's Ellie, but his shot goes wide after Richie got stick on stick before he could pull the trigger. Ellie chases over. Able to keep that puck in. A penalty coming up to Erie. Halverson's headed to the bench, a delayed penalty coming. D'Angelo and Ellie battle in the corner. Ellie's fallen down and gets enough of that puck to get the whistle, a holding call. And the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds with 10.43 to go, down a goal. We'll have a power play. Travis Dermott got all tied up with Nick Ritchie. There's the penalty, power play when we come back. Goaltending has been a story in our CHL Roots alumni. It's brought to you by Boston Pizza. Order from over 100 menu items at bostonpizza.com for delivery. Kevin Hodgson had 11 wins in both 93 and 1992 for the Sioux Greyhounds. Look at Brandon Halverson this season. He's got 10, one win away, and he would like that W to force a game seven back in the Sioux. And again, goaltending, a story, and it's been a good one in this series. RJ? Power play for Sioux St. Marie. They're down by one. They've scored once in this period. To carry to within that one goal. Here's D'Angelo. Very quickly fills that shooting lane. There's another chance. Richie let that one fly. Too many bodies in front. Couldn't get it on goal. And McDermott muscled the puck out of the corner down the ice. Was that ever a decisive strong move by McDermott just reaches in spins and puts it down 200 feet another real solid pass there by D'Angelo boy is he ever smooth as a stick 
He is the power play quarterback. Every team's looking for the property of the Tampa Bay Lightning. First round pick in. Last year in the draft, D'Angelo. Heads to the corner. Kind of AC. Can't get it past D'Angelo. Kept in at the line for a moment. Now it's out. St. Marie has to be careful here. He's always looking for that shorthanded chance. The crowd reacts as it looked like there were a few Greyhounds on the ice as the puck was there. Richie. He was going one on one with Darren Radish. He ran out of ice. Jared McCann. Down low. He knows Richie could win some battles down there if he can get to the puck. Got to the line. Nurse knocked it down. It did come out though. D'Angelo takes the puck away from Bailey. Got it to McCann. Now Bailey has it. Bailey to the middle of the ice. Drops off for Nurse. Cross ice pass. Polchinski put it off the side of the net. He had the open cage looking at him. And he was off with the shot. D'Angelo back to Nurse. What a feat by Darnell Nurse. Now to Bailey. Penalty killers have to be tired. Another shot from Nurse. And that puck goes out of play. Williams was looking for it. Fortunately for him, it was over the glass. Well, you mentioned that Darnell Nurse has done a little bit of everything this year, and he's just improving by the day. What a perfect pass here. And the thing is, McCann in the slot's a little bit of a decoy. Looks like he's going to tee it up. So you have to respect that shot in the slot. Williams, look at him. He's facing McCann. He's Tolchinski wide open. He just can't bury it on that premier chance they had there. Off the faceoff, Dupuy gets a chance, and then it's slapped away by McDermott. Arnell Nurse retreating back into his own zone. One last charge up the ice. Marchman knocks it off his stick. Back on the ice is Dermott. Here he's killed off another one. Dupuy trying to keep this pressure on. Gets to the middle of the ice. Dupuy in his overage season. Puck shot to the corner. Now wrapped around by McDermott. Nick Banks got enough of it. Got it out to center. Now a penalty coming up to Sault Ste. Marie. This is the fifth. Minor penalty called in the third period of game six. <laughs> and this time, it'll be Erie going to the power play, much to the chagrin of Sheldon Keith. Power play honors when we come back. Five minor penalties in the third period. Game six, and now it's Erie's chance to take advantage of the man advantage. And the fans like that when we talked a little bit about it about the fact that it was maybe a little embellishment there on that interference call the Gertler but you know, the referees their their hands are a little bit tied right now if you're going to reach in and, and grab people interfere with people they're looking to call that but I think it could have easily been an embellishment call there too Travis Dermott gets to the line tried to look for a deflection in front Bailey working hard but can't get the puck from Dick David McDavid, cross ice. Baptiste scores on the power play. Here he's back up by two. Great that 11 goals in 15 playoff games for Baptiste. He's red hot. And boy, that is his money spot right there. Another great seam pass from guess who? Connor McDavid. Sets up on the power play, puck possession, a couple passes to massage it around to the tape. And he has a lot of time in that position to take a look to where he wants to shoot it. And he's shown that he can bury it from there as he does. Again, a 45-goal score last year. You leave him that much time, he's going to make you pay. They capitalize on the power play and get that two-goal lead once again. 5-3 lead, three of those goals coming on the power play. That's 10 in this series on the man advantage for Erie. And again, Sault Ste. Marie finds themselves in a two-goal deficit in the third period. This time, though, the clock's not on their side. Less than eight minutes to go. Tolchinski, he was coming in with a burst of speed, but three honors were back there to greet him. Tyler Ganley, Carolina pick. Maybe future teammates in Carolina with Tolchinski. Dumped in, McDermott takes a look over his shoulder, plays it on the forehand, and that has enough to get out and not enough for icing. Ganley watched by DeBrinket. DeBrinket's not letting Ganley waste any time back there. Now Halverson's out. He leaves it for Jared McCann. Nick Ritchie barrels down the left wing side. He'll send it in, and he's got some speed coming in for it. That almost 
Came in front on that short side. Again, here he chops it out with some pretty good drawing. Seven minutes to go in the third. Anthony D'Angelo picks up speed as he exits his zone, but waiting at center ice. All the Otters, there they are, just inside their own blue line, and there was no room to work for the Greyhounds. This time, it goes down the ice, and it is icing. Well, they look at the goal scorer that's given his team a two-goal lead. Once again, Nicholas Baptiste with the perfect shot from the spot he likes to shoot it from. And the defender goes down to try and block that shot. You know he's going shelf. He picks the corner. And he's just too good from that area. Another good pass from Connor McDavid. And the celebration afterward. They understand how much the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds were pushing back in this one. They're a dangerous team. That little cushion means so much. With just under seven minutes left in this one. And the game plan for the Otters, pretty clear. Get the puck out of their zone and defend. It's now two goals. It's a little bit of breathing room. But Sault Ste. Marie can strike quickly. We've seen that. Top scoring team in the OHL. They're not going to go away quietly. You know that for sure as Sedition looks up. One of the speedier guys on the ice. And they're going to continue to flow, continue to change lines and put pucks into the offensive zone. That's what they do best. And the top line out there for Sault Ste. Marie now, an offensive zone faceoff. Looking to get things sparked here once again and another push. Still time, 6.26 to go in the third. Big line. It's been so good for Erie. Polchinski, McCann, Bunting. Seem to have found their scoring touch in the latter stages of this series. They'll need it in the latter stages of game six tonight. Crowd is into it. They want to see their honors advance to the OHL final. Still some work to do. Box loose, Tolchinski has it back to D'Angelo. Tried to make a move. Lost the puck, but got it back. Spin gets away from Betts. D'Angelo, a lot of work before he got that puck in front, and the Otters just bat it back to the boards. Betts behind the net, Bunting chasing after it. Radish will be first to it, but can't clear. McCann read it well, but then it's chopped out to center. Betts touches it ahead, coming in on the breakaway with Strom, and he's stopped by Halverson. And Brandon Halverson has given his team a chance. McCann the other way. Otters are back. Another turnover. It's a three-on-one. McDavid to break it. Ellie. McDavid to Ellie. McDavid to break it. They score. Tell you the roof's gonna come down in here. You talk about waves of offense. Dylan Strome, perfect pass by Betts, goes in alone. Great save by Halverson to not allow him to score, keep his team in it. Right on the ensuing rush, a three-on-one with the top line of Erie on the ice, Connor McDavid. This is a picture-perfect tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe in the back of the net, and a three-goal lead for the Erie Otters. And look at the celebration after that. Well, those are three of the last players you want to see coming in if you're Sault Ste. Marie. Second goal of the game for Debrinket. Fourth point of the game for Connor McDavid, and he's back at it, Louis. They shut him down fairly well in game five in Sault Ste. Marie, but he's back in game six. Well, they really did. They were all over Connor McDavid on Thursday night in Sault Ste. Marie. Played the perfect game, really, against him. Allowed him to only produce one point. Were physical. Got frustrated. McDavid did. And we kind of figured he might come out here and want to redeem himself like he's done all year long, and he's done just that. Sault Ste. Marie had the riverboat gamble a little bit. That caused a couple of odd man chances. They weren't giving up many odd man chances in the last couple of games. Nurse. He gets a shot. Halverson going to the bench now. And there's just under five minutes to go, but he's had to come back because Otter's got the puck. Murphy's pass in front to Betts. Couldn't get his stick to the ice. Now Halverson heading to the bench. There's a good pass over to Moore. Tries to go to the outside. That's a pass through the blue paint, but nobody was there for Sue St. Marie. D'Angelo behind the net. Don A chops at it. Again, along the boards. He's tied up by Murphy. Back to Nurse. 
D'Angelo down near the corner, looking around. Who's open? Extra attackers out there. D'Angelo takes a shot, and he rang it off the post. He spotted a seam, but it's off the post. Now McCann, lone man back. Makes a pass over to Nurse. Darnell Nurse in front of the net. That deflected just wide. McCann has it for Sault Ste. Marie. Extra attackers out there. They're down by three. Under four minutes to go in the third. D'Angelo's pass. Good stick by Donay. That prevented the backdoor play from materializing. Ryan Moore. He's an overage player. D'Angelo. He stick handles as Darnell Nurse hits to the corner. Now Nurse has it. He stops. Donay took a swipe at him. Couldn't get the puck away. D'Angelo toward the net. There's a shot. And it winds up going high all the way back to the line. McCann controlling. Otters exhausted out there. Sault Ste. Marie not letting them touch the puck. Moore's pass in front of the net. That's picked off by Strom. And he lightly sends it down the ice. Didn't even look at that open yeah, net. That's a disciplined play right there. Get it to somewhere you can get fresh troops on the ice instead of getting that, trying to look for the open net and have a face off in the defensive zone. Still lots of time in this one. Richie's pass. That lines up with Remy Alley. Alex Dabrinkin for the hat trick. That's empty. Dabrinkin, hat trick. Honors lead 7 4. Well, he knew there's no way he was going to miss that one there. Good defending by the Erie Otters. Terrific sticks in the defensive zone. They just totally get into the, into the middle. Don't allow any passes to get through. They wait for their opportunity. Unselfish and disciplined play by Strom to get fresh troops on the ice. And to break it, gets his feet moving, gets over the red line. And the 51 goal score in the regular season starting to get hot. He buries the hat trick and the celebration is starting already on the bench here. As they know, this one's pretty much wrapped up. A four goal lead with under three minutes left in the game. How excited is that kid there? Remy Alley was out there. Hasn't scored in 12 <laughs> games, now 13. I got to laugh. He's sporting that little two-stitch scar he's got there on the chin. Back to the Remy Alley story. The net was empty, and he elected to pass it over to yeah. Brinkett instead yeah. of getting that goal to get out of the slump. That's a good point. He knows he has two, and he's been looking for his first goal in a while, too, for him to get hot as well. Great game by him, though, in a two-way effort. Ellie, I thought it was a much better game for him in this one so far. Ellie with two points. Hat trick for DeBrinkett. Two points for Baptiste. Three assists for Travis Dermott. And there's their captain. All revolves around Connor McDavid. Well, you know what RJ really does, and, and they did a terrific job, Sault Ste. Marie, in shutting him down in the game Thursday night. They were all over him and kept him to only one point. Tonight, you knew he was going to want to be a force, and that's exactly what he was. Got the things going with a pass, a goal himself, another assist there, and then he finishes it off the tic-tac-toe. Another perfect pass to the Brinkin backdoor for his fourth point in the game. And he just came back with a vengeance. Had an assist on the Debrinkin empty net goal. Five points for Connor McDavid. Well, there you go. Selling them short. <laughs> <laughs> They've scored seven. McDavid's been on, in on five of them. This is now up to 42 points in the playoffs. Crowd's not going to sit down here in Erie. They know they're going to see their honors again. And it's going to be in the OHL final. Two and a half minutes to go. Four goal deficit. That might be too much even for this high powered Sioux St. Marie team. Baptiste at center. That's what he wanted to do. Get it into the Greyhounds end. Quick changes now for the honors, and they'll all hang back. Marksman's the only guy in the Greyhound zone as Sioux St. Marie works up to center ice. White is knocked down, and the Greyhounds are offside. Gary Otters, five points from McDavid, and a 7-3 lead in game six.
Connor McDavid, he's got the hat trick man right beside him, Alex to break it. They were all smiles in the commercial break. It's almost like they know we're back from commercial break. Game face is still back <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, game face is back on instead of smiling. We talked about how he performs after only getting one or less points, which has only happened 14 times. And this is what he does. These are the numbers that he's put up. And 11 of those 14 now, he's come back and had three or more points in the next game. So that's why he is so amazing. He shut him down once, but he's going to make you pay the next time. That last change, such an advantage in game five for Sheldon Keith and the Greyhounds. They had red and white sweaters all over McDavid. Whenever he touched the puck yep. in game five, he still managed to get one assist, but that was it. Turned into a win for the Greyhounds. The force game six tonight. And what a close one. Four goals in the opening period. In fact, Sault Ste. Marie had a 2-1 lead, but Jake Marchman tied it. Latter stages of the opening period. And then a five-minute major to Hayden for beat for slew footing goalie Devin Williams in the second period. That resulted in two power play goals for the Otters. McDavid in on both of them, and it was a two-goal deficit to start the third period. Sault Ste. Marie got one back courtesy of Darnell Nurse. But then they really had to run and gun a bit to try to find the equalizer, and that caused odd man situations, a power play goal by Baptiste. Then DeBrinkett's got two in this third period for a hat trick in the game. And we were joking with him a little bit before the game. He did get high stuck in game number five by Justin Bailey, and he got a little nick on his chin. The guys were giving it to him a little bit like the band they wouldn't even stick on because of his beard that he has going. And he said in 15 years, that'll be a seven or eight stitch cut that it was. Keep in mind, he's 16. Yeah. He just turned 17 in December. What a season for Sault Ste. Marie. Number one ranked team in the CHL. Won nine straight after they made all their trades from January 9th. Went 26 and three the rest of the way in the regular season. Took care of business in the playoffs. And First two rounds against Saginaw and Guelph, and then they ran into the Erie Otters. And Connor McDavid, who's elevated his game. Power play was great for Erie in this series. Penalty kill was good, too. Darnell Nurse could be his last game of junior hockey. He was fantastic. Had the tough test and task of trying to shut down McDavid. Yeah, I'll tell you, I think for certain it's probably his last shift in the, in the OHL. The Erie Otters came in against the powerhouse Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. They were the underdogs in this series. Erie, underdogs, no chance. They win the Western Conference Final. They win the Wayne Gretzky Trophy. Otters are moving on to the OHL Final. players Brian Moore Connor Boland into their junior careers what a crowd here in Erie absolutely incredible and showing their support now and have been standing on their feet for the last eight minutes just waiting for that clock to tick down some crucial moments so the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds didn't go down easy Erie had to continue to get their leads back and they finally do sealed the deal and now the celebration will begin for a little while until they get ready for the OHL final. A big game in this series was game two. After a 6-3 win in game one by Sault Ste. Marie, Erie was able to come up with a 5-2 victory at the SR Center, a place where Sault Ste. Marie only lost three times in regulation throughout the regular season in the playoffs. Two of those three wound up being against Erie. And that gave the edge to the Otters came back here to the Erie Insurance Arena. Otters won both. Game five, it looked like Sault Ste. Marie was back on track. Really played well, and here in game six, close game. Second period, those two power play goals opened it up, and yep. then Sault Ste. Marie Jake had Marshman. to push. 
That that goal to me was the one that kind of settled things back yep. in, got them back on track, right out of the box, tied the game, and let them know, okay, we can move forward here. When you look at it, though, the series was lost by Sault Ste. Marie. They didn't win one game in here in the whole series, and that's that's the difference maker right there for me. Home ice advantage, you have to win on the road to win a series. They never did. The Erie Otters did, and they win the series. Sault Ste. Marie tied for the most road wins in the regular season in the OHL. Erie, incidentally, had the most road points, so they were the top road team. They got it done in game two. McDavid's just too much. Yeah, he really is. It's, a, it's remarkable. You know, you can shut him down, you can contain him for a bit, but not forever. He's going to eventually find a way to pick you apart, create an opportunity. And when he gets opportunities, the great thing about the great players in the game, and Connor McDavid is one of them, they make other players around them better, and they rose to the occasion. And they were the recipients of some terrific passing by him. But when he had to take matters into his own hand, hands, he was able to do that as well. Alex Dabrinkit. He's wearing the hat. He should be wearing a hat. Had a hat trick. And the Erie Otters, these two teams really, Louie, they knew they were going to meet. You know, we you never to... know for sure, <laughs> yeah. but logic said that at some point, and it would be the Western Conference Final, they'd go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And they were prepared for it. They knew it was going to be a tough series. Both teams respected the other, and they knew it was going to be a tough, hard-fought battle, and it certainly was took six games to win this one for Erie and Darnell Mir showing the emotion now he was just a beast in this series he was so good what a team Sault Ste. Marie was Erie put it together at the right time had a great season themselves you have to play near perfect to beat Sault Ste. Marie the Otters did and the man who orchestrated the offense for the Otters is standing by with Rock what it's about you want to go to the OHL final, and here you are, still one step away. Yeah, obviously it's exciting. It's a great night to, to be in the area, and obviously the fans are pretty pumped, and um, you know it's exciting for sure. So, um, you know, we'll celebrate it, but uh, you know it's not uh, not finished for sure. You know, after Game Five, you said, "Well, we got to go back to our building. It's still lots of work. This is a very tough hockey team, and they proved it tonight. They gave you a handful early." Yeah, obviously they're a great team, and they uh, they did such a great job all series long, and. Um, you know, it still feels good to, to get it done here tonight in front of the home crowd. You've got some big numbers, but in this game, in the last couple of games, everybody's been chipping in. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it's not all me by any means. I mean, we have uh, you know, an unbelievable group here, and, um, you know, it really shows the depth that, uh, you know, we have. So, um, yeah, all credit to them. You can get a little bit of rest, but there's still work ahead. Oh, yeah, there's still tons of work ahead. I mean, this is exciting, but can't even imagine what it would be like if, uh, you know, we can finish it off. So, um, you know, the work goes on. Connor, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Connor McDavid, the teams remaining, not only here in the OHL, but in the WHL and QMJHL, just took a big gulp. His Erie Otters are still in it. And one series away from making it to the MasterCard Memorial Cup later this month in Quebec City. North Bay or Oshawa might have something to say about that coming up in the OHL final.